just like awkwardly. Well, I mean, they did do it last GDQ. <laughs> they did? Yeah, the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the crowd, I mean. <laughs> What, yeah, they just put like they, they, yeah. they zoom in on someone and then they wait until they're zoomed in yeah. and then it says dance cam. <laughs> <laughs> it was good though. I like the touch. Yeah. It, was, it was nice last GDQ. You know, it, you, I like the Twins games now. They've been doing this thing called "Don't Be That yeah. Guy." Yeah. Uh, and they'll zoom in on somebody and he'll be like picking his nose or something. <laughs> but it, it won't it won't say anything and then all of a sudden it just says "Don't Be That Guy" and then the oh, guy gets so like good. embarrassed. That's so good. <laughs> it's really good. Oh, they're already going, aren't they? I don't know. Are we testing? Maybe? One, two, three. Testing. I'm um, just gonna keep saying testing. testing. That's, I have no idea. That's our own vocabulary. You beat it. And uh, welcome to Summer Games Done Quick 2015. Uh, I'm Golden alongside Spike Vegeta, Darkman, and Fiesel. We are going to be uh, giving you a little bit of a pregame flavor here of what's to come this week. Uh, Summer Games Done Quick, of course, uh, a showcase of speedrunning for the next uh, seven days, but also an opportunity to benefit Doctors Without Borders, uh, a cause that we've been doing now for the last uh, three years at Summer Games. And uh, we encourage you all to uh, donate at home to the cause. We'll talk a little bit about that here, give you an opportunity to find out uh, some of the ways that you can influence the marathon through your donations, as well as maybe win something yourself. But uh, let's talk about the run at hand here. So uh, while we're setting up here, Trihex, you know, almost ready to go, but let's talk a little bit about Yoshi's Island, going to kick off the marathon. Spike Vegeta, tell me please why Yoshi's Island is kicking off this marathon. It is the top five speed game. This is the most ambitious opening to a marathon they've ever had. In addition to Trihex, just Yoshi's Island by itself, whoever is the runner holding the controller, it's an amazing speed game. It's your 2D platformer, but it's on the 100% category, meaning they're going to have to be collecting red coins, flowers, uh, keeping their star count up the entire run. So what puts it above any other 2D collectathon style game is that you do have the egg shots. So constantly what you're going to be watching Trihex doing is multitasking. There's, no, there's going to be very little stopping to grab any items. It's going to be off screen shots. It's just an unbelievable speed game to watch and uh, people should get pretty hyped for it. It's yep. an unbelievable start to the marathon. And uh, Darkman, tell me why Trihex is the guy kicking off the show. Yeah, so you're talking about GDQ veteran. I mean, he's been doing Yoshi's Island for about five times now, so he knows what to expect. He's also a really entertaining runner. I mean, I can't think of a better opener than Trihex. He knows how to pander to the crowd, entertain them, wow them. He's going to pull off some flashy tricks. I mean, you're talking about the swag. He's going to bring it. He's going to pull that amazing trick that saves maybe 30 seconds, or, may, or sorry, excuse me, 30 frames. But it's going to look cool. So, right. I mean, he's a veteran. He's entertaining. Look forward to it. Yeah, he's, there is no more entertaining auto-scrollers in speed gaming than Trihex taking care yep. of it there. And it's safe to say that the game's in good hands. He's been playing for 10 years. He knows what he's doing. It should be fun, electric. Uh, Fiesel, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about donating and incentives because right off the bat here with uh, Yoshi's Island, there's a chance to influence the marathon as well. That's right. So in addition to your donating, uh, donations going to help a good cause, uh, Doctors Without Borders, um, it's also your chance to give your input on how you want the marathon to, to, to shape up. Um, so basically you can put your donation towards one of the many incentives that are available. Um, we've got category incentives. Uh, some of the games will start out on the schedule with a shorter category, but you can uh, donate to see more of the game. We've you can upgrade Bionic Commando Rearmed or uh, Chrono Trigger, for instance, up to 100%. Uh, there's also going to be donations uh, to raise the difficulty of the game. Um, see the runner try a more difficult challenge. For instance, on Mega Man 10, you could see hard mode. Oh, yeah, um, and then there's some just for fun donations like uh, the two players, one controller, and Stretch Panic. Yep. And of course, the bidding wars. Now, that's your opportunity to cast your vote from between several choices. Um, there's a lot of uh, character choice donations like uh, Mega Man and Base. And then what may end up being the biggest bidding war of all uh, is going to be the, the name choice in Chrono Trigger, where you get to, to uh, choose what character names we have. And we've seen these RPGs in the past um, have enormous bidding wars because people really get into yep. you know, trying to get mm -hmm. put their names out there. So if you've got a name in mind, I would say donate early and just start. let the momentum start to build up. Don't yeah. wait till the last minute. Right. But, you know, and get started early and, and see if you can get other people rallied to your cause. And uh, worth pointing out this year as well that there will be uh, scrolling incentive updates on the bottom of the screen uh, throughout the marathon. So you'll be able to know if your file names are ahead or behind. You'll also be able to see uh, how the bid wars are doing. So if a game is coming up and it's really close, uh, you'll have an opportunity to pitch in and make it happen at the last minute. 
Uh, let's talk about uh, some firsts here, because uh, this is the first time that SGDQ has stopped in Minnesota. Uh, we are here at the Crown Plaza in St. Paul. Uh, but not only are we here for the first time, we're seeing a lot of games make their debut at the GDQs for the first time. So why don't we just talk a little bit about that. Uh, a game that I have in mind here that I think you guys are going to enjoy is Kirby Tilt and Tumble. Now, this is a game that involves shaking your GameCube, and uh, <laughs> literally that, that is what you're going to see. There's some violence towards consoles uh, as Kirby is moved around the screen by tilting the GameCube. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, enjoyable. You guys have games in mind as well that you think uh, are worth checking out. Fiesel, why don't we start with you here? Uh, well, my pick would be Gargoyle's Quest. Um, that's a really cool game. It's for the uh, for the Game Boy. Um, it's sort of a action adventure platformer. Um, it's part of the Demon's Quest series. So if you're a fan of of that game and the other games that spawned off of it, you should definitely mm -hmm. check that one out. Um, it's being run by Unusual Cook, who's the world record holder in this game. He's really good at it. It's just a fun run to watch, and it's going to be part of the summer Game Boy Done Quick block. We got a whole block of Game Boy games getting played this time yep. around. Yeah, people have been uh, wanting a Game Boy block for a long time, and now they're finally going to get one. So, uh, Darkman, what do you got here? So I got Hotline Miami 2, wrong number. It's being run by Duke Bilgewater. So Hotline Miami 2, of course, the sequel to the acclaimed Hotline Miami 1. Uh, it's been run at GDQs before, the number, the first one, but not the second one. So uh, it's really quirky, top-down shooter, uh, really fast-paced. And Duke Bilgewater, no stranger to the series, a really entertaining runner. You never know what you're going to expect. Spike? OK. Um, I if I ever want to sell people on the idea of speedrunning, I show them two games, Super Mario 64 and classic 2D Sonic. We're actually going to get effectively a new member of the 2D Sonic family, essentially the uh, uh, spiritual successor in the form of Freedom Planet. This game has an unbelievable amount of movement tech, and they go real fast. When the 2D Sonic block is going on here in a couple days, make sure you show up a little early to watch Freedom Planet. You will be blown away. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of the uh, blocks that we see almost every GDQ. The Mega Man block, of course, uh, no stranger to the GDQs, but seems to always find a way to top itself. Uh, what's different about the Mega Man block this time around, Darkman? So let me start off with one of the underrated gems in the block, and that's Rockman of Forte, or also known as Mega Man and Base in the West, being run by Clear Tonic, who is, this actually has a bid war, and he is the world record holder in both categories yeah. between Rockman and Forte. I mean, really difficult run because you have what's this power-up that lets you do double damage, but you have to be at really low health in order to do it. So that health is so low that you could potentially be killed in one hit by all the bosses. So really fast-paced, exciting run, has some crazy zips to it. Um, just expect a really entertaining and difficult run. Yeah, very high risk, high reward run. Uh, Fiesel, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the uh, classic Mega Man games that uh, you're going to be looking at here? Right, uh, we got two classic Mega Man games this time around. We got Mega Man 4 and 10, which are Two very different games, very different histories, but both highly optimized speed runs, very popular. Um, these two games actually haven't been in the GDQ since uh, AGQ 2013, I believe. Uh, Mega Man 4 is going to be a race between Chelney and Almond City, uh, the two top runners for this game, so we can expect that to be a really tight race. Mega Man 10 uh, is going to be run by Used Pizza, who's a very entertaining runner, great to watch. And we've got a donation incentive to have that run on hard mode, which uh, should be very entertaining. You so that. get your, yeah, yep. you want that. Yep. Get your bids in for Absolutely. that for sure. All right, and uh, why don't you tell us very quickly, Spike, about the uh, big, big Mega Man race. Mega Man X2, you might be wondering, we just did it last year, we're bringing it back again, and there's a lot of storylines to it. At the top, we got four runners here. Caleb Hart needs no introduction. Very passionate runner, but also uh, is, you know, more so than just his stream, he is passionate about making sure he can win these races. Trogdor, who took second place last year, maybe the most quiet of the four, but is unbelievably consistent. I've been watching this runner get 33s for months now. He's ready for this. You you got BJW, who we thought had retired from this game, is now coming back. And I think he wants to prove something here. I think he wants to prove that he can still be on the top of the world for X2. I like him for this race. And then we've got the ultimate, who we just talked about, Tonic, yep. who, in addition to running Rockman and Forte, we didn't even know runs this game. I had, no one had it. So he's the underdog. He's the, you know, he, he's, he's the wild card of this, whatever you want to call him. Tonic is in this as well. And do not sleep on him. Yep. It's yep. going to be a great race. No, it should be a lot of fun, and uh, there's a reason it's back. You yeah. know, it's a game that's very back and forth and be entertaining to watch. Uh, with that being said, I, I think that's uh, pretty much all that we have for you guys here. Uh, just one more highlight, too, as well. Uh, Super Mario 64 race at the end of the week. Number one, two, and three in the building for that game. So if you want to watch uh, a very enjoyable race at the end of the week, Super Mario 64 will be around for that as well. Uh, that being said, I believe that is going to do it here for our pregame show. Thanks again to Fiesel, to Darkman, to Spike Vegeta, 
I'm Golden. We've been your guest hosts here on the pregame show. Let's send it up to the front uh, to get this marathon started. Rom Scout and Sumi, take it away. Good. All right. All right. <laughs> Welcome to Summer Games Done Quick. That sucks. <laughs> All right, this is uh, Summer Games Done Quick 2015, benefiting Doctors Without Borders. And before we begin uh, diving into everything, I actually would like uh, to introduce you to Marin from Doctors Without Borders, who has a few words to say. My name is Marin Flynn. I'm an obstetrician gynecologist, and I actually first found out about this sort of gaming fundraising last year when I received a text from my brother saying he was playing video games and raising money for Doctors Without Borders. It was rather unusual to hear from him. Usually the way to actually contact my brother is at 3 a.m. on these online video games in the middle of the night. Uh, but because he's been raising money and because we're so grateful to you, I wanted to take an opportunity today to tell you what your money is doing. Doctors Without Borders is an aid organization. It's independent. We're not associated with any government, political organization, or corporation. We're doctors, we're nurses, administrations, logisticians, pharmacists, and we work in areas where no one else will go to provide health care for people who otherwise wouldn't have it. We're in South Sudan addressing the malaria epidemic. We're in the Philippines addressing natural disaster. We're in the Central African Republic where there's political strife and conflict. I wanted to tell you two stories today of my personal experience in South Sudan where I've been providing emergency obstetrics uh, to give you an example of what it's like to not have medical care and what it's like to have medical care. The first example is a woman who came in, she had been in labor for four days, and her baby was trying to come out sideways. This doesn't work, babies can only come down butt first or head first. In four days, her entire body was racked with infection and she was close to death. There's absolutely nothing we could do because there was no medical facility close enough for her to give her a timely delivery. Within 10 minutes of coming to our hospital, she died. The second example is the story of what happens when you do have medical care. We had a woman come in. Again, her baby was trying to come in sideways, but she lived close to our hospital. We were able to identify the transverse lie. We did a cesarean section, and normally after delivering a baby, you deliver the placenta of the afterbirth. But in this case, there was a surprise second baby. So instead of a woman's family taking a dead woman and a dead baby home, instead we had a family go home with a living mom and two living infants. The money that you are donating this week is actually going to save women's lives and children's lives and people in areas where there's otherwise not health care. Thank you for choosing to play your games this whole week. Thank you for choosing life. Please go to our website, www.doctorswithoutborders.org slash SGDQ. <laughs> I know, right, right? This is difficult, this is difficult. In one month, I'm headed back to South Sudan. I know it's your passion, your games, your play that's providing the medicine and the tools and the people to save women's lives there. Thank you. All right, so before we begin, of course, I'd like to thank all the viewers watching right now and everyone who is, has already donated, which we've had plenty of, and uh, plans on donating. Uh, people who donated prizes, all the volunteer and staff who just spent a lot of time making things happen already and uh, while we're up, so you know, I guess it's a good start. Um, and then, of course, all the attendees. Uh, traditionally, uh, SGQ has been about, I don't know, somewhere between two-thirds to three-quarters of the size of AGQ, but this is actually our biggest Games Done Quick event yet as far as attendance, so that's just absolutely amazing. <laughs> We 
We would also like to take this time to thank our sponsors of this event. Um, this, this event is streamed 24-7 live via Twitch. All subscription revenue directly benefits Doctors Without Borders, and they helped us pay for moving tons of equipment to the venue. We also have Tiny Build, makers of games such as No Time to Explain, Speedrunners, and Lo Lovely Planet, which is featured in the marathon. They paid for the majority of the venue costs here at the Crown Plaza. We also have World 9 Gaming in association with No Brand Con, KitsuneCon, GeekCon. They provided a ton of TVs, consoles, and PCs for the practice room. They also provided the lovely, comfy runner couch. And um, we <laughs> <laughs> Then there's that other one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. We also have Power Up Audio here in the back. You can't see them right now, but they are working really hard. They're providing professional audio support for the event 24 hours a day. We also have Alienware, who donated a wonderful PC, um, an Area 51 gaming desktop as our grand prize, as well as provided pro uh, event support. We have Capcom, who provided financial support for various equipment and costs for the event. The Yeti, who, whom we've worked with for the last five years, um, $3 from every shirt purchased on the yeti.com slash SGDQ goes directly to Doctors Without Borders. Humble Bundle has provided great support for the charities during our last two events. 10% of the select game purchases in their store goes directly to the charity. And finally, we have Something Artistic, makers of custom vinyl decals. One dollar from every vinyl decal sold goes directly to Doctors Without Borders. But we also have a special GDQ logo um, vinyl decal. All of the revenue from that decal will go directly to charity. All right, so let's play some video games. So, our, our first run is going to be Yoshi's Island 100% with Trihex. <laughs> Take it away, buddy. All you. Yeah, what's up, everyone? <laughs> All right, so quick thing here. Yo, is, my, my, is my main man Golden on mic right now? Are you ready? this thing on? <laughs> I, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. Wait, I think I can hear you. Wait, wait. Wait, talk, talk to me again. I hear... Let's see. Oh, ooh, test. Ooh, ooh. Test one, two. Did we get it there finally? You sound good, yeah. All right. All right. Here we Yo, go. What's up, man? Here we oh, go. Dude, sweet, sweet. <laughs> Yo, Golden, I'm actually, I'm really excited you're here today, man. I'm excited for, for this run as well, Trihex. I'm excited that you're here, kicking it off. Let's go. Let's have some fun. All right, let's do it, man. Well, before I start, though, like, there's going to be, like, a lot to explain because I have, like, a 50-second cutscene. So just before I hit press start, I do want to quickly say, all right, very flattered to be here at SGDQ. Very flattered to be the first run. Dude, I'm so happy I got the crew behind me. Um, most of hashtag Yoshi all right here. Golden on the mic. It's going to be very, very exciting. Uh, real quick, I'm Trihex. I'm a... <laughs> I'm a, I'm a veteran I'm a veteran in the Yoshi Island scene, been playing since 2004. And then uh, behind me here I have... Uh, my name's Crispy, I've been running this game since 2013. Uh, I hold the World Plus World Record and the Nintendo Nola World Record. Uh, this is Trix, the 100% the World Record holder. He's been playing for 10 months and he's the best player in the world. The prodigy, the god. <laughs> Alright, dude, well, let's get to it, man. You ready? Is it, are, are timers ready and everything? Okay, um, you, you want me to do the countdown? Okay, sure. Uh, three, two, one, go. Woo! <laughs> Alright, so, gotta hit it fast and aggressive right here, okay? Because we have not a lot of time and there's a lot to explain going on, going in right now, okay? So, Yoshi 100% hasn't been done at a GDQ since, uh, I want to say, uh, AGDQ 2014. So it's been 1.5 years, and a lot of things have changed in the category since then. A lot of dramatic improvements. 
Um, in general, though, Yoshi's Island, I would say, is very similar to Melee, Smash Bros. Melee, because, like, the more you dig, the more depth you unravel, really. Like, the harder you push the game, the more the game pushbacks and reveals more and more tech that you can do to dive deeper into the game. Uh, Speedrunning Yoshi's Island is actually quite organic. It's one of the very few games where you can play quite expressively. <laughs> Oh man, and there's like so much to cover right here. I'm already like behind on things I want to explain, but I'm in the uh, actually one one is one of the hardest levels in the game. There's like so much uh, to cover here. I'm hoping Crispy can help me uh, explain some things here. Uh, the basics about Yoshi's Island. Uh, Yoshi can only carry six eggs at a time. Uh, he eats enemies to make the eggs. Um, 100% uh, means getting uh, all five flowers and 20 red coins, as well as getting 30 stars uh, by the end of uh, the the level. You can only have, uh, you start out with 10 stars, 10 HP, uh, and throughout the level you can gain more by getting star clouds and uh, hitting things with red eggs. Um, Walking on slopes and non-flat ground is slow, so you don't want to do that. You want to, he wants to be jumping every time he touches uh, sloped ground at all. Um, eggs in general can go... <laughs> wow, I'm so bad. <laughs> I missed a uh, flower earlier. That was uh, unfortunate. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. That was already, like, it's already a bad run. <laughs> I figured I missed this, but I wasn't sure. I, I, uh, not gonna lie, I can't quite hear the game, to be honest. It's normally, uh, it's like an off-screen flower that you would, uh, listen for the cue for. Like, I hear the, uh, I hear the sound, like, only through, like, the, the TV, not through my headset. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, y'all. Alright, this is probably gonna be a bonus right here. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, so, so, like, what I want to really go over here is, like, one one's actually one of the hardest levels in the game. There's, like, a ton of... <laughs> Oh my god, so bad. I like I look like a super fraud right now, I'm so sorry about that. One one is really hard. It's <laughs> definitely one of the hardest. Yeah, ones yeah, like that was really circumstantial. I couldn't hear the flower and I kinda threw everything off at this point. I would dare say I'd love to do a reset on that one, but I just think we're behind on time, so we'll keep going. <laughs> oh wait, now I can hear the game now. Okay, now we're good. Alright, great, great, great. All right, so like, as you saw just now, the game rewards you, quote unquote, with uh, bonus challenges whenever you get 100% in any given level. You see that via the gold ring at the end there? Yeah, he'll be, he won't want to try to avoid getting those bonus games throughout the, uh, the run by slowing down just a bit before he hits the gold ring each time. If you go in full speed uh, into a gold ring, you actually get a bonus almost guaranteed every time. That's uh, bonus skips were found in like 2012, was it? Uh... Yeah, yeah. Believe it or not, actually, even though I've been running this game since 2004, um, bonus skips—the the thing that really makes 100% runs like even feasible, like relatively—was um, introduced uh, or discovered quite recently, uh, March 2012. People didn't even really do full 100% runs up until 2012 because bonus bonus games are uh, basically guaranteed through most of the run because they didn't we didn't know how to avoid them. Yeah. So um, now one thing I'm gonna I'm gonna what I'm kind of gonna do with my commentary style here is I'm gonna explain because this game actually has just a lot of raw production value in it. So every level, like literally almost every level, um, introduces some new mechanic that's utilized. So like, if you enjoy like Mario Galaxy 2, where like you see like a new uh, tool or like uh, mechanic introduced on a like 80 HD per level basis, this is a uh, it probably got it from Yoshi's Island actually. Like, um, in one three, you're gonna be introduced to the Chomp Rock, which you're supposed to use to like uh, push and like defeat all your enemies. But uh, we're fast, so we're not gonna use a slow Chomp Rock. You're not gonna see it get much love in this level, unfortunately. So if you were hyped for the Rock, then I'm afraid I'm passing over it right now. <laughs> There are also a few really cool shots in this level. This is one of the uh, more technical levels in the first part of the game. Oh, look at that lag. <laughs> Christ. Uh, the game lags pretty hard if there's too many sprites on the screen. You can't handle the, a bunch of sprites all at the same time. Um. So at the very end of this level, you're going to do like this really sick triple ricochet bank shot for the final four red coins. 
It's like super cash money. If I don't get hit. Alright, let me see what I'm about to... Uh... <laughs> really? Wait, what the... Okay. <laughs> Ow, I'm sorry about that, y'all. There you go. Swag. <laughs> Alright, so um, the, the, the mystery thing here, you see like the, how the, the, the finish ring has uh, five flowers. Each one of those is like a, a mini game. Um, normally, what we do for bonus skips here is like you want to lose a certain amount of speed. Because if you go through it at full speed, you're also going to get the bottom, the bottom left flower petal or a flower itself, and yep. that gets a bonus game. So you want to lose just enough speed to get the, the blank pedal um, right, uh, right after it. Um, in that particular case, though, you saw a different type of bonus skip, which was a, a terrain-based skip. It's a little bit slower to walk on the slopes, so I, um, I deliberately walked on the slope a certain amount in order to lose a certain amount of speed to guarantee that bottom middle pedal. Swag. Yeah, this, this intro here is like really, really tight. I'm gonna go pretty hard to make shots for you. Make up for the bad 1-1. One, one. There, how's that? Hopefully that you forgive me for the 1-1 the one, one being bad. Let's do another one. Oh, let's not do another one. Oh my god. <laughs> That's my fault. Up here, he's gonna shoot this pot off screen to actually uh, break the pot before he even gets over to it. If you shoot that pot off screen, it like knocks it up in the air and it comes down far enough to actually break before he even has to go over there and push it. All right, cool, cool. Got that room good. Here's the first boss of the game. It's pretty interestingly designed. Yeah, like, okay, so in Yoshi's Island, actually, um, the bosses here are genius. Every single one of them is quite unique. And the best part is very few of them um, actually follow what I call, like, the really unfun pattern of boss fights, where it's like a, it's kind of like an auto-scroller where you have to, like, just, like, wait and suffer while he, like, scissor and attacks you, and then he's, like, vulnerable after, like, X amount of time. Very few of them in this game uh, do that. So this is Bert the Bashful. Um, so he's wearing these trouser-looking things, and I missed. <laughs> um, as as I hit him, his trousers lower each time until he's completely pantsless, and then he blushes and runs away. Wow, that was really really bad. Yeah, sorry. About that. Generally, you want to avoid the game lag there if you like miss a egg shot or whatever. But he's done. He's he's bat he's bopped away. All right, so um, the next level is actually an auto scroller, um, which I know you know is very very high for speedrunners. But uh, uh, okay, um, but uh, I'm gonna I'm let, I'm let Golden Rock the mic and do some donations here real quick. But before I do, I want I feel like I'm, it's kind of hot in here, dude. I gotta remove this battle armor I have here to uh, <laughs> to uh, really get into the run. Now it's probably why I messed up in the first place. So, Golden, like, what do you uh, what do you think of my shirt, bro? Uh, I think it looks good on you. You like that? Yeah, I think uh, I think your power level has increased a little bit. Well, thank you, thank you. So I was I was thinking, Golden, like, all right, let's really get some hype for this uh, first run here, man. How do you feel about? Uh, what's what I was wearing like a really really dank like tank top beneath this already insanely dank Dragon Ball Z polyester so Super Saiyan 1989 so uh, shirt. So, so, so let me get this straight. There's more? There's more. There's more. There's more, but I, I don't know how much to like to, like how much hype should it, should it warrant though? Like, Do, are, are, are you trying to tell me that people are going to need to donate to find out? Yeah, yeah. I think so, but I don't know, like what's the amount though? Like, I mean, what do you, what do you think, man? What's, what's, a, what's a good number to like really unlock the perk that is the, the, dankest tank top in existence. 
Keep in mind, I'm already wearing like the Dankus polyester button up in existence. That that is a, a lot to factor in, but I'm I'm gonna try to read your mind here for a minute. Was there was there a guess already in the crowd? Someone's guessing how much money? Oh wow. Uh. I don't know. I'm thinking. What do you What are you thinking? How about a thousand? Is a thousand? Dude, thousand sounds hot, dude. Thousand. One thousand dollars. Not borders, dude. I think a thousand is plenty. Let's Let's do it. All right. So you're telling me that if we donate one thousand dollars, we're gonna find out the sh the shirt the, the, the next level wearing beneath this. Yes. Okay. I guess we better make that happen then. All right, and uh, while while that's going on, I'd also like to thank our sponsors of the event uh, and just kind of run through briefly uh, some information about them. Uh, Alienware, uh, the leader in PC gaming hardware since 1996. Twitch, uh, a reminder that 100% of all subscription revenue goes straight to Doctors Without Borders. Humble, Humble Bundle, pay what you want bundles that support charity. Power Up Audio, it's uh, an indie sound studio from Vancouver, Canada, who's worked on such games as Darkest Dungeon. Uh, something artistic. They offer game-inspired decals and stickers made to decorate your consoles, walls, computers, and more. The Yeti. Uh, today's tea for your torso. Tiny Build. Tiny Build is an indie developer and publisher known for games like Speedrunners, Divide by Sheep, and Lovely Planet. World 9 Gaming. Premier computer and console gaming provider for events across the Midwest since 2005. For more information, world9gaming.com and Capcom with the Mega Man Legacy Collection coming soon. Sorry, I had to remove my, my, my battle armor right there. Let's do this, man. So that is in play, by the way. We're not just bantering up here. There is a, a $1,000 incentive to find out what's beneath the, uh, the Super Saiyan the shirt. The Super Saiyan Swagger shirt, exactly, yeah. I don't want to confuse anybody because you might think we're just, you know, <laughs> talking to talk up here. But yeah. no, that is, that is a real thing. So get your donations in. So 1-6 uh, introduces the flashing eggs. This, uh, that flashing egg that he has in the back of him, uh, he has to hit, it, hit an enemy with it to make a red coin spawn. And if he, if he would have messed up at all, he would have had to redo the whole level from that point. This uh, level's where um, egg route starts to become really important. Um, Getting all those stars with red red uh, eggs and uh, not messing up the red flashing egg uh, uh, swapping is really important there. Yeah. So this uh this level you're gonna see the first uh, vehicle transformation in the game. I'm going to become this really hype, very slow moving, very sluggish, very annoying to control mole. <laughs> mole hype. But but the shades though. Oh yeah, you just have the cool cat <laughs> shades on. Those are pretty dope. All right, so we're going to So I uh, I, uh, I used the wrong egg earlier, so I'm short one star. And uh, the cool thing you're going to see here, this game has a lot of flexibility and, and like recovering. So I'm going to turn this green egg into a red egg, which will crack open and give me two stars right here. And now we're at 30, so now we're good again. Dude, just take a ceiling shot. Come back down. I'm going to skip this beanstalk you're never going to see grow because I'm not even going to hit the cloud to get it. Get out of here. Another terrain-based bonus skip. I'm going to get the I'm gonna get the bottom right blank dot. Yep. Boom. There we go. All right, so let's see here. Um, so let's keep rocking, all right? So again, I'm going to I'm gonna kind of explain what each level introduces as we get into it, because there's just so much to go over. This game is just so rich. There are, many, there are actually many enemies you're only going to see like one time throughout this entire game. It's, it's pretty ridiculous. 1-7 introduces... Um, now, mind you, I don't know what anything this game is actually called, but uh, I just call them Rolly Polies. They look Rolly Polies. They're melon bugs. They're Rolly Polies. <laughs> see? Rolly Polies right there. Look at them. They're melon bugs. <laughs> Uh, flashing eggs once again. So I have two flashing eggs, so I have to fire two eggs. I'm going to shuffle my eggs to the back here, have the two flashing eggs leading forward, fire them at this flower and a piranha coming up here. Get those red cones, touch flatsies. Um, I'm going to make this the drug free run if I can. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you really, really beg me, I guess I could like give in and just hit a fuzzy like later on, but 
Oh, uh, that'll be the next fuzzy level will be in four one. So it's got quite a time to think about it. Get this cool bank shot right here. All right, so this room is actually totally broken. The beanstalk room. I'm supposed to go to the left and grow a beanstalk, and then go to the clouds up here, and then shoot, get these coins manually. But we're just gonna manipulate the camera, load the load them off screen, and just fire at them like that. So it's unfortunate. This is one of those cases where, like, with speed running, because you're not seeing the intended route, you can't even appreciate what's being skipped because that level, that particular room is so broken. But it's all good though. So another thing here, um, really important, another big distinction with 100% runs is that uh, the eggs carry over. You notice that the, the red Yoshi or the burgundy Yoshi threw his five eggs at the blue Yoshi as I go into 1-8. 1-8 has uh, very few egg sources, so it's really important to rack up on eggs in that beanstalk room so I can get in here and just, you know, MLG snipe everything all day with my egg shots. Uh, so this is the first... Um, uh, castle in the game. Yeah, like yep. every fourth is a fortress and every eighth is a castle. Yep. So we got a big bad boss coming up in this level here. Um, one eight introduces um, I don't know, they're called like spitterfish. These little fish right here. They want to troll me. I'm gonna knock them out of the way. We're gonna skip the. I don't know if you saw. There's like a platform there. I skipped uh, to like some fast. <laughs> All right, so this next room here, I'm going to do like this really sick bank shot because I need this red egg. Remember, uh, bank shots make red eggs. So I'm going to use that red egg to get some stars in a little bit here. going to do another bank shot. Then I'm going to, uh, oops, I didn't want to do that actually. I, I, I kind of wanted that egg, but it's not a big deal. So you see right here, I have a, a egg order does matter constantly. I have a green egg and then a red egg. I'm going to shoot this green egg at a switch off screen. I'm going to use a red egg to get two stars off this vase coming up right here. Wow, I hit it the wrong way. I'm bad. Normally you hit it like to the right and it falls apart sooner. All good though. Now we're at the max 30 stars here. Now, normally you're supposed to ride these uh, arrow dials very, very slow, but we're just going to take it and do that. I, I, I couldn't like word how to say it while I was doing it. One thing I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm having a big difficulty doing here is there's a lot of brain power required to play this game, a lot of precision, a lot of, I'm, I'm counting stars, I'm counting red coins, I'm counting eggs, I'm looking at flowers, I'm hitting off screen, listening to, listen, listening to audio cues. It's a very attention, um, demanding game. So like when I have to like throw commentary, I'm like doing it between like between stuff. All right, so this boss is a uh, Slavo the Slime. Um, if I had to compare him to like a, a, a trope of bosses, he's, he's a bullet sponge. You just like spray and pray and throw crap load of eggs out and he'll eventually die. Awesome, good fight. So I know you're, you're asking, like, well, what makes it a good fight? I mean, everything just happened so fast, I wasn't quite sure what happened there. A good fight is beating him with as little eggs shot as possible. You, you want a lot of eggs going into 2-1 the next, in the next World World 2 because um, uh, it'll minimize how risky I'm going to be doing this route coming up next. But, um, we, so we just wrapped up World 1, which went pretty decent aside from a abysmal 1-1. One, one. That's mostly my fault. But yeah, let's uh, do it. I'm throw the mic right back at Golden here. I'm sure he's got some, some awesome donations to tell you about. Uh, I would love to read them there. We're actually uh, working on it at the moment here, trying to get them up, but I'm going to take that as a sign that everybody's donating. So okay. uh, as soon as I get those, I'll get a chance to read a few here, and I'll go, I'll go rapid fire to catch up. Dude, so. all, all good, all good. So let's remind you again, I'm wearing this fantastic-ass Super Saiyan Goku, Super Saiyan Trunks, and uh, Super Saiyan Vegeta. It's uh, all polyester. This is a, I came out of a time machine, actually. I'm straight out of 1999 here. This is like the fire stuff to wear at the mall back in the gap. All right, so uh, level 2-1 introduces Super Baby Mario. It's actually a pretty, pretty cool thing. Um, you know, Super Baby Mario, he takes the control. Yoshi becomes just an egg, and I, I control Baby Mario with a super cape. Unfortunately, you're not going to see that at all right now. I'm going to do this really sick trick right here that Trix is going to explain. Uh, dead eggs can actually open, uh, open up gates backwards. So what he did there was he ricocheted the sh uh, shots where the dead egg was going to fall right through the gate and then shot the flower while the gate was open. All right, so you see right here, I'm riding this dog. His dog's name is Poochie. He's incredibly stupid, and I hate him a lot. <laughs> Poochie sucks. 
Yeah. Um, you see him briefly right there. You, you can't control that dog. You, you just merely give him suggestions of where to go, and he'll, he'll maybe obey you, maybe not. I'm not quite sure. Um, but if you thought he was a cute dog, or you don't understand why he's the worst thing in this game, you'll find out in about an hour. There's a level dedicated solely to his existence. All right, so I'm gonna. This is a, a fun Tetris auto scroll here. I'm just gonna like sit here and swag out for a little bit. While uh, you know, Golden can just tell you all about how awesome Dados Dot Borders is or something. You put me on the spot like that. <laughs> uh, dude, dude, it's, it's chemistry, man. I'm, I'm, it's, it's the alley oop. Yeah, uh, well, uh, like we mentioned here, this is uh, the third year that we've been partnering with Doctors Without Borders uh, at SGDQ, so we are encouraging everybody to donate uh, for the cause. Uh, the donations themselves are not showing up yet on the stream, but I want you to know they are being processed and, and added in, so the incentives that you see scrolling on the bottom of the screen, uh, keep in mind that those are still in play, uh, and we'll get those updated as soon as we can. And uh, just a, a reminder to uh, spread the stream. Uh, the best way to uh, increase the amount of donations that we get is to make people aware of it. Tell your friends, uh, get on Twitter, and uh, spread the word. Hashtag SGDQ 2015. Oh my god, it did, oh. it did not load the flower. Really? Really? Wow. That's really bad. Can I despawn that? Am I screwed? Rick? Christmas? I don't think you can. <sighs> Dude, that was terrible. <laughs> Alright, I'm sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> that was a really bad mistake there. That's a... Alright, so let me, um, let me explain. Okay, so this all off a lot of time just now. Alright. We are currently... We are, I'm using 2015 Metastrats. Like, I'm, we're pushing the game to its limit. So there's a lot of points where you're doing so much. You know, I have six eggs, one in my mouth. I have two Shy Guys on screen. I have... Two crates with stars all loaded on screen. You have the falling rocks. The game's already going to lack a, a, a ton. I unfortunately despawned the flower because I did it a little. I did the jump a little bit too early. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, in that particular circumstance, like there was no way to recover. I could not despawn the falling rocks to expose the flower to hit it to get 100%. So I had to kill myself. That's really unfortunate. I'm sorry about that. As, as further and further the game gets pushed here, though, it's it's actually a very brutal category. I'm sure Chris and Tricks can elaborate here on just how like how like insane this category has gotten now. Basically, any mistake you make is almost an end of the run kind of thing now, because um, making one small mistake basically uh, you lose th 20 to 30 seconds easy by just making a small mistake like that, and he lost like a minute. All right, so this time I hit the flower. I don't know if you even saw it was all off screen there. And it was a, a, a moderate amount of lag there. Um, you can't see it, but like it eats my inputs occasionally. Yeah, sorry about that. That's uh, Don't worry, there'll be, I'm sure there'll be more of those to come throughout the run. <laughs> Next level's 2-2. Two, two. All right, all right. So check it out. All right, there's a lot to cram right here. Two two is actually one of the most technical levels in the game. Just I'm, I'm gonna throw out some speed run lingo to like give, like all the bullet points like on the back of like a game box, give you an idea how legit this level is. We have Baby Mario skip, Beanstalk skip, Toady boost, Red Coin duplication glitch, and Mole skip shot. All in this level. This level is insanely broken now. This used to be like a a five minute level. It's like a um, a three minute level now. I want to say. That's about right. Yeah. And um, to give you an idea too, like how, how competitive the circuit's gotten for 100%, runs don't even start until you get a good 2 2. Like all the, everything before is all just filler. Like you get to this point, wow, I'm bad. <laughs> so I'm getting hit on purpose right here to get this purple toady enemy. He's actually very, very unique. He's one of the, I think he's the only enemy you can actually spit against the wall and he'll stay alive. Yep. Oh, I lost a lot right there. So I'm doing a beanstalk skip right here, but I, I messed up the, the good flutter. Okay, good. Uh, what he's doing there is he was duplicating red coins. Uh, with flying shy guys that just sit there, uh, you can actually tongue them, leave the red coin just sitting there, spit them off screen to despawn them, and then they respawn with another red coin. So you can just duplicate uh, up to three red coins, or two to three red coins, something like that, at max. Uh, that allows him to skip uh, the whole mole section later in this level. There we go, there we go. Yeah, so uh, to elaborate here, so if you remember in 1-6, there was the Cool, cool Cat Shades mole guy that we uh, had a blast uh, playing as, right? There's another... Really? Stubborn coin right there. Um, there's another uh, really... 
action-packed section with mole action, but uh, unfortunately it's really, really slow, so I'm gonna do my best to skip that. And I did, and um, the reason you have to go in the mole section altogether, actually, is because there's uh, four red coins, or three red coins, and uh, if you recall, I did, I did uh, two red coin duplications, so I have two extra red coins than I, than I should right now. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is, um, so I need to get one more coin, but it's trapped in this really obnoxious, unforgiving, very specific egg shot. There you go. Yeah, so that'd be a perfect nine o'clock right there. That is a very specific angle. Only one tick works on that angle thing. Stubborn, 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 stubborn. That shot's actually really, really stubborn, too. Alright, alright, yeah, that, so yeah, 2-2, two, two, I wish, really, I can just, like, write you a whole book on how insane that level is. Like, there's a lot, a lot going on there that we didn't even get, get to cover the other small things, that, the other small optimizations that it has at this point. Alright, so, um, next level coming up here in 2-3. <laughs> alright. So 2-3, um, again, I'm playing on a Japanese card here to compete against the Japanese speedrunners, and it's a little bit faster, and it's a, I, like, I think it's a little bit cooler, too. But um, the, the, the level title here is What Do Gusties Taste Like? So these cute-looking um, kites with arms, looking, they're, they're so adorable, but yeah, they're like all over the screen, so you have to like, kind of navigate around them. They're pretty harmless, though. Most enemies introduced like, pretty much before World, World, uh, World 3 are, are very friendly and won't do anything to you. Um, in this level, though, there is another... Uh, are we going to be introduced to um, shooting through foam? Uh, when you shoot through foam, it actually bends the trajectory of the egg shot you're going to do. So you have to, like, kind of uh, play around with it and get an idea of how you're going to um, forecast your egg shot being uh, bent when you fire through foam. You notice there, too, I skipped another Baby Mario star. Uh, I know you guys are really, really happy to see Super Baby Mario, like, get in there and kick a lot of butt, but unfortunately, I, uh, he's slow. You might, you might see him eventually. I think you're, you're going to see him in World 4 at some point. Uh, yeah, before 1, you'll see him. Do a cool egg shot for you right here. <laughs> so you, saw that, uh, you saw that giant little blue blarp looking guy, uh, Neppy Nuts. He, uh, we're not going to... You only see him, um, at, I believe, in like two levels total. Only in here and 3-3. Three, three. I think so, yeah. Do a traditional bonus skip right there for you. All right, so let's see, let's keep going, dude. All right, so, all right, so uh, in the next level two four, there's gonna be. A, um, you may have seen this one earlier. I don't know if it's in an earlier level or not, but there's like these thing called. Um, there's like a, they look like pinball gates, and they're meant to like block you off from entering a certain direction of a level or a corridor. You're gonna see uh, what we call gate hacking. I'm gonna hack the gates. I'm gonna open them from the wrong side. It'll be very, very obvious. You're gonna see oh, another basic technique here: uh, perfect fluttering. Whenever you see like me, um, it looks like Yoshi's kind of like flying in the air. There's a, um, you know, you lose a little bit of height, but you keep a lot of it still. Um, perfect fluttering. There's a, it's a three-frame window. This is a 60 frame per second game. Uh, if, if you don't get what that means, there's like a, it's a very, very intense game. Um, I have a three-frame window. Really. To flutter perfectly, and if I do, I'll gain one pixel of height. You'll see this come into play here very, very soon. Gate hack. I don't know if you saw that. It's not supposed to do that. So at this point, we've broken the level. I'm doing everything not very, very anyway. unintended. <laughs> also, I don't know if you saw that was pretty cool there. I uh, I got the key above the lava. I'm supposed to actually like. Uh, you saw some hollow blocks there. You're supposed to hit a red switch to um, temporarily unlock the red block, so you can get in there safely above the lava and get the key. But again, we're uh, we're swag, so we just say you no. Know, we'll get it above the lava because we're cool like that. All right, so this section right here, at the end of this room, you're gonna see the perfect ladder I was talking about earlier.
30 stars. Boom. You're not. I mean, there's... it's tough to appreciate it because like it all it happened so fast. But yeah, that was a a three what three sixtieth of a second yeah. window. There's a few places where they like put something right out of your reach, uh, and like trying to tempt you to go somewhere. Uh, but using the mechanics yeah. of the game, you can actually uh, get up to get up to those uh, just out of reach places in unintended ways. Whoa, dude! Did I just do a double shot, ricochet, double catch? You did. <laughs> all right, all right. So, uh, again, the bosses here in, in every single level—they're all really, really fun. I already have 30 stars, so I can skip that checkpoint ring. Probably didn't bring it up earlier, but those checkpoint rings, while they also, you know, form a function of a checkpoint, they also give you up to 10 stars if you are short on stars. But uh, since we already have 30, we can just skip it all together because it has like a there's like a little half second delay to the game, so it's best just to avoid if you already have it. So this is um this is Big Boo. We saw him earlier. You know, whenever you're turned around, he wants to attack you. But if you look at him, he's all scared and whatnot. We're gonna just spray him with a. Uh... There we go. Quick fight right there. I'm sorry, I wanted to like explain how it ha how it works, but like, pfft, it's like a really fast fight. You just like never turn around. If you walk in here with like three eggs, you can just like spray them down with eggs and eat the bats they spawn off screen and get out of here really really fast. Best level in the game. <laughs> you think so? Yep. Really? By far. Dude, no. World four easily bops anything in World two for free. World four sucks. Dude, please. <laughs> your, your your tastes are bad and your opinions are bad. All right, so 2-5 introduces, uh, you guys remember in the original Super Mario Brothers, like Kid 2, who rides that annoying cloud and just like trolls, trolls you all day long? Well, he returns here, uh, yay, I guess. You'll see him in a bit. I, um, I just outran him just now, but you'll see him at some point. Again, notice on, like, the entire ground here is all, uh, all foam. But there's a red switch going on right now, so I safely am uh, good to go. You only need the red switch because I have to ground pound that crate to get the uh, key. So, another um, hype. I think this actually might be the first vehicle transformation in the game. Yoshi can turn into vehicles. There's a, a cute choo choo train. Oh, wait, you saw the mole earlier. I'm, I'm, being, I'm being silly. So, this train is like extremely hype. We're on the hype train right now. Choo choo. Um, you know what? Though? I'm, I'm kind of lonely, dude. Golden, talk to me right now, man. What's going on, dude? Well, uh, just an update here. We're still trying to uh, sort out the donation stuff here, so we're going to. We have donations coming in. Uh, I'm seeing them. There are a lot of them. Uh, I do, I, I'm trying not to read any yet because I want to actually be able to get some names out there rather than just uh, going through. But no, uh, I, I understand. Just I understand. a heads up. We're yeah, we're working on it. Uh, thank you all for donating. There are quite a few though. There are they're coming in. I'll get there eventually. Try hex. Oh. Stay one. Give me a break, dude. <laughs> dude, I love you, man. It's all good. It's all good. I just want to talk to you, man. I feel like I'm, I don't know. I feel like it's getting a little lonely. All right, so this is the final room in um, two five. in two five. It's actually very fast, very aggressive. Might have missed that coin just now. Get that, get that red coin off screen. Do this back shot right here. Get this guy. Spit through him. Backwards uh, ground pound to despawn this guy and not have that happen, but it happened anyway. <laughs> So yeah, very fast and very aggressive. And that final room, if that was like, you know, you know, 10,000 miles an hour for you. It, that, uh, those are the kind of levels I like where you just get in there and it's like fast and furious. You're going to see a lot more of that kind of action going into World 4. So remember what I said earlier, World 4 is my favorite world. And I mean that for a reason because it's the coolest looking world. So look forward to that. All right, so in 2-6, there's actually this really crazy trick. Um, with the camera, we can uh, spawn and despawn objects if you do a certain positioning. And I'm going to spawn and despawn those, uh, those pinball gates earlier I mentioned. And get those red coins right there. Unfortunately, you don't see what, I, what the intended way is, but you see that, that pinball gate right there. That would have stopped the egg normally, but um, we skipped that. I'm not even sure how it was discovered, honestly. That's a pretty insane trick right there. I know, I know, I'm going over your head because it's like really tough to explain and like appreciate what happened there, but that was a, that's a pretty ridiculous trick, honestly. There's a, it's another like angled precise uh, shot. It has to be a very specific angle that he shoots at or it won't work. 
So just there, I hit a, I hit three coins off screen. That, that's all vi uh, audio cue, no visual whatsoever, no visual confirmation. You're gonna uh, Yoshi Island's pretty intense, where like um, the eggs can travel pretty much um, 1.5 screenfuls any direction. So there's a lot of optimization that can be made here. So the more and more you can um, trust, I don't know your instincts, I guess. The more you can optimize the levels with the eggs. The best way I can explain it is pretty much, this is like playing Mega Man if he had like an arm that could reach 1.5 screenfuls in any direction at once. Like you can, like your, your manipulation zone is like insane. So that's why the skill ceiling is so high, which is why this game is so deep, which is why, uh, oh man, that's why we're still in this game, dude. That's why the scene is still booming. That's why Trix is the, the, the base god, the prodigy himself. Oh, I needed that. Oh, I, actually, I didn't need it. Oh, really? Yeah, these spitterfish are really annoying. Wow, that was a really bad shot. So I get for talking while playing. <laughs> there we go. All right, so there's that's actually a lot going into uh, two seven here. Two seven introduces a whole new enemy. What you know, every level pretty much does at this point. But uh, it introduces jumbo shy guys. So when I'm, you're gonna see those, they're like they're like really big, big fat. Um, Oopa Loopa looking shy guys. Uh, when I eat them, I produce jumbo eggs. And when jumbo eggs are fired, they act as like a power block. They just like kill everything on screen immediately. Like just, you know, tap seven, wrath of God, and just everything dies. Pretty sick. I'm also gonna do some, uh, <laughs> there's gonna be a point here where I would need to clock. So I'm gonna need to like be running forward, um, tonguing and doing an egg shuffle all at once. But I'm pretty bad at clawing actually. Um, Mewtwo King never taught me how to claw whenever me and him hung out. A while ago. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my chin to uh, hit my uh, my Y button on my controller while pressing B and A. You don't understand, you'll see in a second here. It's pretty, it's pretty silly. Like, uh, Chris makes fun of me about it all the time. Sorry, that was. <laughs> Again, normally you would want to like, you'd want to claw with your index finger, but I'm bad at clawing, so I just use my chin. You know, whatever works. Notice here too, I have a, a, a towel. This is actually, a, it's not that I like, I drop my spaghettios and I'm like really, really nervous. I'm actually not. It's um. Again, this game is very um, execution heavy. So like just from pure, I don't know, uh, execution, I guess. The hands do get a little sweaty. And I want to keep my hands like, you know, dry with uh, max precision, no drop inputs. So I just regularly uh, dry my hands off. If you're like a regular on my stream, you'll definitely know what I'm talking about. You see this all the time. I mean, we're really there. It's like 20XX. Like this is where you know, speed running towel and whatnot. <laughs> All right, I just want to remind people of some of the upcoming uh, incentives that you can donate for. Uh, later tonight, uh, we're going to have the opportunity to see Big the Cat's story. So that's an incentive that you want to get your money in for now. Uh, there is also a Donkey Kong Country glitched any percent run uh, that you can donate into the marathon, as well as the Lost World of Donkey Kong Country 3. Those are all today. So if you want to donate towards something today, consider those when you make your donation. All right, so um, in the next level here, yeah, make sure we're really good. Um, the next level here, two eight, two eight is actually going to be the longest level you've seen by far. It's it's nearly five minutes long, and that's due to it being uh, very linear. There's there's a lot of running forward, and at that point, there's not much that eggs can really do to make the level faster altogether. So unfortunately, um, it's one of, and due to that fact, it's, it's a level that I like uh, rarely practice because um, like I find it, I find this level actually pretty boring. Not that it's boring to watch, it's just like compared to like the, 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 the theme park that is World 4, I'm like not eager to do this level at all. 
I don't know, Crispy, is there, are, are there levels that you feel that um that you are guilty of just like never practicing because we're like really boring to you? Well, most of World 4 because I really don't like Dude, it. Dude, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You think World 4 is boring? World 4 is pretty boring, yeah. Dude, are you kidding me? Dude, like it's like a it's like the Picasso canvas. Like there's like just you know paint your brush or use your brush and paint everything. They just spray everywhere. Most of the levels are pretty basic though. <laughs> Dude, why are your tastes so bad? <laughs> like for real. All right, so do you guys love the hype train right here, Choo Choo Train? Oh, I actually got the. Uh, dang. Okay, I did a. Um, if you get the positioning right and you hold uh, down and BA, you can uh, transform early. I don't know, I'm probably explaining it really bad there. I don't know if you even understood what just happened. <laughs> I saved a second. Um, help, me, help me out, tricks. I use clip off the. You clip off the rails before you, uh, when you enter the transformation. Um, it's a certain positioning and the speed that takes you off the rails. There, it only saves like a second, but in uh, five eight, you'll see it again. A much bigger version of it. All right, so um, let's go over right, the title of this level here is the Potted Ghost. That's going to be the, the boss we're going to fight. So you're going to see a recurring theme here of flower pots. As you see I'm pushing one right here. I'm going to do this really, look really obnoxious on this right here. I'm going to do it, my little seizure thing right here for you. Wow, I'm bad. I just barely got that wrong. So you're gonna notice that uh, a lot of there's a lot of flower pots that'll have like uh, hidden objects, keys, stars, or whatever, giving you a hint of what's to come. The epic foreshadowing, if you will. And again, like I said earlier, the bosses are all really, really unique in this game. So you're gonna see a, a really uh, nice twist on this boss here. Very few of them have the same mechanics. By the way, I'd like to point out another way that you can uh, help at home spread the news about the event. You can host the Games Done Quick channel on your Twitch page. I'd like to point that out because we are currently sitting at 895 hosts. It's a lot of hosts working our way towards 1,000 hosts on Twitch. So thank you for sending us viewers that way, too. What? That's sick. Dude, let's get those quad digits, man. All right, so you may, you may notice, I don't know if you can hear it or not here, I'm doing a lot of uh, unnecessary tapping. I, uh, I do it to keep the blood pumping in my hands, like uh, keep myself, you know, hot and ready for all this uh, Yoshi action. Oh, I got the angle. The angle. A little, little egg juggle for the ladies right there. No, that always keeps them at bay. Thankfully, you know, th and one of them I bring up here too, Yoshi is actually a really awesome speed game because there's actually very few things that are genuinely random. For example, that previous room right there where like the, the top left uh, flower pot had the key, that could have easily been like a, oh, let's make, let's make the pot key random. That'd be really cute, wouldn't it? And then you'd have to like just deal with that and you can lose anywhere from like 30 seconds figuring out which of the six pots in that room has the key. But thankfully Nintendo is awesome and uh, totally um, is not random, it's static. So I figured I'd bring up like, the, as a speedrunner, one thing I'm thankful for is like not having just like r randomness like be in the run. So yeah, the, uh, this flower pot here, uh, he's a big bad meanie. We're just gonna push him off and get rid of him, because I don't like him. Why didn't you off screen grab him? <laughs> uh, actually, I'm a little, a, little, a little rusty at that, actually. You know, in, in trying to uh, get a good time and keep up with the competitive circuit with the with tricks behind me here, you, uh, I've eliminated a lot of the things I used to do that were like hardcore swag, but would lose a little bit of time. So I used to like ground pound right off into the pit and and like do it to where you thought I was gonna die, but I don't die last second. It looked really really cool, but it does waste like an extra two seconds or whatever. And again, you can die and your run will be over. So it's like a really really you look like a big silly goofball if you end up doing that. Uh, one thing I want to bring up earlier, though, um, the boss there, I, um, <laughs> it all happened so fast. I'm sorry. Uh, I manipulated the AI to have him like to have him like spit his little blue fireballs at me as late as possible. That way, I could uh, push him further and get a quick kill off him. So, um, coming up here, uh, World Three, in my opinion, is a oh, it's an awful world because it has uh, 
Dude, it has a lot of monkeys. It has a lot of foam bending egg shots, which are kind of annoying to calculate. One frame tricks, actual random behavior with the monkeys all together, and a quite brutal boss fight uh, halfway into the world. Not my cup of tea, but I'll get through it for you guys, though. This level in particular is very brutal. Like, one mistake can kill you. <laughs> There's no real backups for stars at all. Yeah, so um, what Chris was bringing up there earlier, uh, the final room in this particular level is... Oh, dude, it's a nightmare. If you get hit, there's no way to really recover fast. So I'm going to I'm gonna make sure I make a red egg, which remember, if the red eggs crack open, they produce two stars. So if I get hit, I can fire it at something and get two stars on the, on the fly. I'm going to um, get a red egg here and be a little bit safer going into 3-1. Uh, Rock and roll. Nice. Now we're good. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um. Again, another thing too. I can't. I want to like. There's like. There's like the invisible difficulty in that level because like I am deliberately firing those eggs specifically and slower than I would like to because it avoids the lag. There's like 12 monkeys all on screen, a flower, some red coins. There's like so much stuff that like the game can just lag to oblivion. And remember, when the game lags, it's really bad because it eats your inputs. So you can easily just like miss, miss your jump and then just die. 3-2 uh, is one of those like um, heavy sequential rhythm-based levels. You're gonna notice the tiki guys are all dancing. Um, there's gonna be uh, platforms that move to a certain pattern. It's really important to get their uh, get their first wave. Like this one right here. I'm gonna. No, I just missed it. I just missed it too. If I had missed that one coin, I would have had everything on first cycle. So I had to wait for the second cycle of this rotation now, which is a little unfortunate. This level's now bad. Can't see here another another pink. Oh, I got the squish face. I love that. <laughs> it's adorable. Gonna shoot these coins right here. Go into this hidden canopy in the tree. I'm gonna MLG snipe all four of these red coins with one egg. Something cool like that. Drop down. This uh this egg spitting plant right here. When you ground pound it, it'll give you the maximum number of eggs you can you can carry on screen at once. Wow. That was bad. So we're gonna just. Do that real quick. Come right here. We're good. <laughs> ah, that was unfortunate. I accidentally upspit the uh, the guy rather than eating him. I think uh, I think I pressed down and I uh, I didn't press. It was like during an animation or something like that. All good though. Again, the, um, uh, with Yoshi 100%, it's all about your um, not just how well you play the game, but how well you can recover. Because like this game is so dynamic that you'll just you'll be resetting for days trying to get a, a perfect run. So until you get to the point where you're perfect, which no one currently is anywhere near that, uh, you have to kind of work on your recovery skills a little bit using the red eggs and whatnot. It's a really cool mechanic. Maybe nuts again here. This first room of three two is actually really really aggressive. I'm gonna just like try to nail everything real quick. If only the rest of the level is fast-paced like this. We get to see the submarine in this level. <laughs> Alright, there we go. <laughs> and I admit here, if you remember earlier, I confessed that I rarely play 2-8 uh, because it's a really boring level. I rarely play 3-3, uh, three, three, the second half of it, because of this like really obnoxious uh, you can notice a pattern here, like, I don't think anyone really enjoys the vehicle sections in this game. No, they're pretty bad. In particular, the submarine is, like, awful. Like, it's, oh my god. You'll see, it controls, like, crap, and the missiles never want to go where they want to go. It's just the worst. Oh, look at that. I forgot about this one. You got it. The cute helicopter now. Which is required to fit through this little tight gap right here. Notice I ate an egg, I ate an enemy, and the enemy's back in my mouth now. It carries over from earlier, which is actually pretty impressive. Yoshi actually has some really solid uh, programming. 
tab memory like that. So now we're in this really uh, anti-hype submarine. <laughs> Um, the missiles, there's like uh, invisible, I guess, um, ranges attached to all the fish and enemies, and your missile will like go to one of them, but sometimes they'll just like freak out if it's between like zones of the two enemies and just like wander around forever and just cause game crippling amounts of lag and just like, oh man, I don't even know, like punch a TV or something. <laughs> So right here, there's like this rotating spike ball. I'm gonna get hit by it on purpose. It's faster to have that happen than to actually wait and avoid the thing altogether. Spam a look cool. Hmm. Check out these cool uh, snow-looking crabs right here. They're snow crabs, right, Crispy? They're claw daddies. <laughs> All right, there's this really difficult shot here. I'm going to try to go for it. It's pretty insane. It's going to be an uh, egg surfing. Oh, I got it. Crap. Again, if you remember earlier in 2-2, there was that really sick mole skip shot where I had to do that perfect 9 o'clock angle in order for it to uh, hit that red coin through the foam, the tight corridor. Right there is the same situation. That has to be like a perfect 3 o'clock shot to go through that tight corridor and not die. Tight, tight, tight. All right, cool, we're good. That level is really obnoxious. You notice there, there was like a, just a ton of stuff all at the very end. There was like um, a flashing shy guy, which is like he's practically invincible. There was two monkeys that do random behavior based off when you, when you jump, uh, and you can easily get you know, screwed over and like caught in a bonus challenge right there. Thankfully, we got past that. Um, three, four. Um, introduces, uh, well, you saw the snow crabs uh, in the previous level here, but you're going to see them uh, in a more dominant role here in a little bit. And more submarine. Yeah, and more another transformation right here, too. And uh, uh, the, what the snow crabs introduce here is uh, because so far, every enemy has pretty much been like a, a one one hit kill or whatever, but snow crabs have three HP, so you have to either have to ground pound them. Which is kind of dangerous because they have the big meaty claws uh, that can attack you for massive damage, or you um, or you can shoot three eggs at it safely and kill it. You're gonna see a lot of enemies get beefed up in later in later worlds where they have uh, you know three HP, uh, six HP or whatever. You see that coming up sooner soon. This level is also one of the lengthier ones too because there's like a it's just very 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 linear, very a lot of hallways, a lot of walking around. But uh, this upcoming room here, there's going to be a... Uh, it's actually one of those, like, I don't know what to call it. You have to, like, kill all the enemies in the room to unlock the secret. Really? Wow. I'm not sure why that failed. You only have six... You can only carry six eggs at a time, and each of those uh, sheep crabs have to be... Uh, gotta be... Gotta be hit. So you need all your eggs. You can't miss a single egg shot in that room, or else you're, you won't be able to unlock the secret in that room. I'm not sure... Um, I'm not sure why I missed there, unfortunately. I'll try this again. Here we go, okay. And he's using very specific shots there to create stars on each shot, so he can skip uh, a savoring later. Yeah, remember, the um, when I'm shooting eggs, when they bounce off of surfaces, they change color, and when they bounce twice, they become red eggs, and when red eggs crack open, they produce two stars. So I'm using that, uh, there's like the synergy of killing the crabs quickly and getting a, a ton of stars. So it's like a win-win. Like All right, so right here, I'm going to do this. Uh, if you listen there, there was three red coins hit. So that was a, the third coin was completely off screen. That was using the, the audio cue alone to get it. Optimization. Going to do this really uh, pretty easy, but it's going to be a, wow. I say that. Like, I'm going to let, let Crispy explain this one. <laughs> uh, you just, this is a uh, first point. You're going to see the continuous fluttering over a gap of, something. Um, you'll see it later in a more dominant role, but a much bigger role uh, in World 5. But he skipped using that like pinwheel where you, uh, you like, you're supposed to ride the pinwheel and make it rotate, but you can just flutter over everything and skip it. So uh, one thing I'd like to point out to the chat here. I'm seeing a, a lot of people subscribing, and I just want to remind everybody uh, at home that when you do subscribe 100% uh, 
of the uh, subscription money goes to the charity, Doctors Without Borders. It is not uh, going anywhere else. So please consider that as an option. You'll get some cool emotes and support the charity at the same time. Awesome, awesome. It's an interesting boss. Yeah, this is, this is actually the boss that only does this one big twist here. So, so far you've seen Kamek always um, beef up the enemy, right? So it'll be like a super frog. But plot twist, he's going to shrink Yoshi. And then the frog's going to eat me for lunch. Big plot twist here. Okay, so now I'm going to be in his stomach and I have to... Um, I have to, which has a uvula for some reason. I'm not quite sure if the... I, you know, I never really did a... a I don't know, biology. I'm, I'm, I'm sure this is probably a little bit inaccurate here, but so I have to uh, swallow these uh, now jumbo by comparison to the shrunk Yoshi uh, shy guys and fire my uh, my jumbo eggs at his uh, uvula while avoiding his. Uh, he has chronic uh, chronic heartburn and bat and stomach acid evidently. So I need to get him a pair of tums or something like that. So he wants to hit the sides of the. The uvula instead of the straight, the the tip of his uvula, the little dangly thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever it's called, right? Yeah, actually, it's pretty crazy. Um, it has a uh, very sophisticated hitboxes for the the uvula. Um, depending on what angle you hit it at, you can it can take anywhere from five to as many as a uh, 15 eggs in a typical speed run. Uh, we have I average like about seven, but if you do it really good, you can get five. All right, so three five is actually probably my. Maybe my favorite level in the otherwise bad World 3. This is the worst level in the, oh, the world. The level's cash money, so watch me. The foam is awful. The foam is evil. Yeah, so the entire first room there was entirely foam, so if you just go crazy with your egg shots, you might uh, screw yourself over and have no way to actually continue, or have to, like, cross a very, very dangerous gap. Or you despawn stuff, because lag. <laughs> foam causes lag really easy when you uh, hit it. So this level introduces, uh, or it doesn't introduce, but um, I'm going to actually use a watermelon right here. Watermelons are unique in that they go that perfect nine o'clock direction that you that you are trying to do with your egg shots like if, to use an egg right there you'd have to it would take much longer than just get the watermelon and use that all together if that makes sense there we, there we go there we go all right so the um so let's go back here. Okay, so this game was released in um, August 1995. So this is like pretty much the peak of the, um, let's call it the golden age of gaming, right? You know, with the SNES versus the Genesis. So there was a, there's a, there's a couple of um, sly references to some competition in this game, actually. Um, you're going to see here in, the, in level 3.6, the, the level icon there, it's a hedgehog. There's, there are these really annoying blue hedgehogs littered throughout this level. Is that a coincidence? You'll see here in a little second. Wow, because I made fun of him, now he's mad at me. And I'm a star short, that's a fine, I'll, I'll, I'll cover that, no problem. Or mole. Yeah, so more more mole hype right here. Some shades. So like you see me doing all the turning and whatnot. I have to actually train myself because like the if you if you have like really fast reflexes, it ends up being that you can like you can turn too soon and like spin out kind of. It's kinda of weird to explain, but like it's like really annoying. Alright, so we're gonna we're gonna shuffle to our um, our yellow egg here. Right here. <laughs> oh my god, dude, that was sick. Alright, alright. 
All right, all right. So I, I t abandoned the structure. Okay, there's a structure to get the, um, the, the red switch jump, which is a frame perfect, speed dependent, position dependent. Oh, I did this wrong. Oh. There we go. All right, yeah. The, um, the red switch jump is a frame perfect, speed dependent. Um, um, help me out here. What is? <laughs> I'm not really explaining that one. Uh, uh, trick, right? Um, it's it's frame perfect, so it's one sixtieth of a second to get it right. I abandoned the structure I have to get that on first try because I needed to uh, use the turn a yellow egg into a red egg and get two stars. So I like completely did the improv and I still got it, which is pretty sick. Like that was pretty insane. It's very very precise trick that he got. All right, so three seven introduces um uh, I don't know what to call them. call them a uh, gulpy fish. They're um they're really really angry fish that uh. Introduces like one of the rare things in this game where it can uh, instant kill, instantly kill you. Everything so far, like, you know, it, it separates Yoshi and maybe Mario, and there's like a countdown. Use all your stars. Wow. <laughs> Did really bad there. <laughs> I, I messed up the monkey, the monkey skip earlier. Like it's my fault. It's all good though. Recover. All right, so I'm currently short. Uh, so this is where, again, this is where the adaptability of doing 100% runs comes into play here. So right now, I'm short. Uh, I think I'm short about five stars, but I, I know where I can recover that quite easily. This is a, thankfully, this is one of those uh, earlier levels where there's plentiful stars. There's not like exactly 30 stars in the level to acquire. There's more you can get. It's being a little forgiving to me right now. So we'll get that. But yeah, Gulpy fish, they're like these jumbo, really grumpy fish that can just swallow Yoshi whole and you instantly die. Uh, hopefully, you don't see them. Um, you'll see at the very end, I'll, I'm gonna skip like over one because they cause a lot of lag. All right, so right there, I'm supposed to hit that question mark cloud and uh, trigger a beanstalk. But again, you can use enemy boosting to just get right above that. Um, I'm not sure if actually have I, have I explained enemy boosting yet, but uh, when you jump off of enemies, you can jump off of. You get an extra height boost off your flutters. Like um, when you just jump and hold B, you just stay in the same uh, height, about the same height. But if you jump off an enemy and hold B, uh, you get a much higher flutter, and you can use that to skip a bunch of uh, small sections in the game. All right, all right, cool. So. I'm a little bit short, and it's not really a problem, though. Make it work. So there, right there, big gulpy fish. He's hungry. We're gonna thankfully avoid him. So I'm, what I'm doing right here is I'm gonna invest in 3-8 and rack up on a, a lot of eggs because there's like I need a, I need a ton of eggs at the very beginning of 3-8. You'll see that in a second here. So very similar to 1-7 um, where I was in the beanstalk skip room and I got like just a ton of eggs to, for 1-8. Um, I did the same thing right here. So I have, I currently have five eggs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need six for the very beginning of 3-8. Um, of You'll see that here actually. 3 is actually one of my favorite levels in the game. It, um, um, like in the old school uh, 2006, my initial routing um, where I did everything as intended, it, I actually hated this level because it's one of those like, you actually need like 40 eggs throughout the entire level. It's pretty insane. But with the new 2015 route, um, you know, there's a lot of like new hip things I'll explain as I get to here. But uh, I think the egg count's been dropped to like, maybe like 30 now. So the first enemy saw that that was a, I don't know what they're called, I just call them slime ghosts. Wow, I'm bad. Could've used that egg, but it's not a big deal though. And they, um, you have to he's keep you keep hitting him with eggs, and he goes further and further back, allows you to progress in the path that he's blocking. I'm bad. Wrong, wrong direction. That was a that's that was a pretty bad room too, I'm not gonna lie. Uh blew through way too many eggs and missed a couple of shots. Keep going though, it's all good. 
gonna bank off the ceiling right there, get that flower really quick and easy. So coming up, he's gonna shoot a slime off uh, off screen, and he's, like he's gonna shoot him as he spawns, and it's gonna keep him at where he hits him. So you're supposed to hit those uh, ghosts with a bunch of eggs, like four or five, to be able to jump over them. But if you shoot them at the right point, you can actually just only use one egg. Yeah, you, you might you might see one kind of grow in a, a little bit here in this level. But again, it's kind of tough to appreciate because you don't even see what the intended uh, mechanic there is, unfortunately. All the more reason I recommend that if you're watching and you're enjoying this, dude, play the game, check it out. I'm explaining the best of my ability, but there's a lot going over your head right now that I could go into. I could write you like a Bible on this game, it's ridiculous. So you saw he, he kind of grew right there for a second, but I stopped him. So those uh, piranha enemies, you can actually go through them if you damage them. They have a few frames of uh, where they don't have any hitbox on them uh, after you uh, hit them with an egg. So you can just use that to go right through them and skip killing them. So this is the biggest developer intended Easter egg in the game. When you snipe the uh, piranha off screen, Kamek comes away there, screams, oh my, and just freaks out and runs away. Which is really, really good, because honestly, that boss fight, the PD, Super PD Piranha, is like the most annoying boss fight in the world. It's the one that I don't like. It's the auto-scroller. He just sits there and dances around and just throws crap at you. You have to avoid it for like a minute and a half, and then you can finally hit him with one attack, yeah, and he has three HP. It's the longest boss fight in the game, Oh, dude, and they let us skip it. It's terrible. It's terrible. But you know what's not terrible? Golden's voice. Well, thank you, Trihex, for that uh, wonderful transition. You got me. Uh, I have a question for you, Trihex. What's up? Do you think we should read some donations? Dude, absolutely. Cause it's been a while, you know. I haven't done this in a while. I hope I can do it right. How about $100 from an anonymous donor that says, Trihex t-shirt hype. How about that? Thank okay. you uh, for the donation there. $60 here from another donor that says, Big the Cat. Big the Cat. Later today could happen. Thank you for that donation. Uh, we have a donation here of $7.82. Hey, I've been watching these marathons for three years now, and I have loved every single one. Shout out to my Ralph Z's and give me that plushie. So he's actually going to do the extra half the extras first uh, out of safety. Uh, you can actually do them later on, but it's much safer to do uh, because this level exists uh, to do to them much earlier, uh, right after you unlock them. Uh, it's really easy to despawn a bunch of things in this level. Uh, monkeys are pretty random in how they spit the seeds, so if they spit too many, you can despawn a red coin just randomly and uh, lose a bunch of time. Oh, dude, we're out of here. All right, this level is awful. Oh my god. Like, when I tell you, all right, look, I'm gonna list off the possible errors you can get in three, okay? Monkey, monkey random behavior, poorly visible watermelon seed spit, getting screwed over, red coin despawn, flower despawn, eggplant despawn, red coin shy guy, late trigger. This level can go wrong for like 65,000 small reasons, and it's only 53 seconds long. So it's like if you make a mistake, it's a, it's percent, percentage length wise, it's like abysmal. Oh god, it's so annoying. But thankfully we're out of there. That's literally the reason why we do the extras early, just because of 3 being so bad. Like it's insane. Again, unfortunately, you didn't get to, or fortunately, you didn't get to see any of those annoying things happen because it can, oh, it's killed so many runs, as Crispy and Trixton uh, attest to. So this uh, two has a really cool gimmick here. The level's called Hit the Switch. It's one of those race against the clock levels, or gimmick levels. So I hit the switch, and I have to continually keep the switch active, or I'm gonna die immediately. So we're just gonna keep hitting switches. This one has a really interesting bonus skip where I have to, uh, uh, Tr uh Chris can explain it for me here. Uh, you jump at a very specific point, uh, on there and it gives you a, even more speed. Uh, he's actually gonna go faster instead of slower here to uh, skip this bonus. And I messed up. You know, I didn't jump high enough. So, we'll see what we're getting right here. I'm not glad, this is actually one of the harder bonus skips for me. It's um, definitely one of the hard, harder bonus skips in the game. Yeah, there's not really a good visual cue from where to jump and how high to jump. And Ooh, I get a, um, it's going to be a flip card. Yep. 
All right, so you're gonna do top left. <sighs> Dude, bad luck. <laughs> so um, it can turn into a good situation there because uh, one of the useful items you can get is an instant 10 star, instant 20 star, which I could save as backup in case I mess up in a future level, but <laughs> that didn't happen. Also, that was minimally bad because I only lost like eight seconds there altogether for a bonus game, which could be much, much worse. So if you remember way earlier here, um, Poochie, the cute, adorable dog that you all love, right? That you all think is like just the cutest thing adorable ever. This dog is evil. You'll find out by here real quick. This is a, it's supposed to be an auto scroller involving Poochie, which is like just sounds like oh my god, literal hell on earth. But uh, thankfully, you can spawn these bats infinitely and gain enough height to get high enough to skip the trigger for the auto scroller and make this into a regular level. So it goes from being a three minute level into a one minute level. And we're gonna ride Poochie. We're gonna go. Come on, Poochie. Dude, this dog is stupid. <laughs> I don't trust him at all. I don't even get away from me. Look at, look, at, look at this. Look at this guy. The eggs bounce off him. It's the most annoying thing in the world. Get him out of here. This that is. Oh, go ahead. This is also the only level where it's impossible to get a bonus skip. No matter, like, see? No matter what you do, uh, you you can't get a bonus skip, or you can't get a bonus on this level, because I guess it has to do with Pucci, and they didn't, they couldn't figure out how to make it work, where uh, Yoshi would catch him, right? Right. Sorry. So now we're gonna enter World Four. If you remember, way early back in World Two, I told you this is my favorite world. This is where all the hype starts right here. This is where I'm gonna go crazy. So we're gonna get introduced to Goombas, and this is the second level featuring Fuzzies. Currently we're in a drug-free environment. Um, I'm gonna do my best to make that continue, but no guarantees. So the reason why this is one of my favorite levels is like it's just like a you can go pretty freestyle crazy. I uh, I really wish I had rehearsed my swag a little bit more here because you can do like some pretty sick ricochet shots throughout this little section here without losing any speed. But uh, I ran a little short on time, unfortunately, so I don't have my swag rehearsed for that particular segment. So I'm sorry about that. Um, the 2015 route here, though, um, I'm going to get uh, 11 stars via uh, alternative sources in order to skip the second checkpoint ring. So I already have 21 right now. By the way, if I can just point out, uh, earlier I mentioned that we were at about 895 hosts. We're now over 2,000 <laughs> people hosting us on Twitch, so thank you for that. Uh, yeah. And I've also got a donation comment for you quickly here. $10 from an anonymous donor with the comment, Carl Sagan. Whoa, 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 they're just a fan. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am sorry. was in the, I was in the fuzzy section. Um, I was trying not to get destroyed. <laughs> Carl would understand. That was a... Yeah. Carl Senpai, forgive me. Oh, no, it's all going. So you got a donation from Carl Sagan. That's hype. What, 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 what you got? Uh, that was that was the comment. The comment said Carl Sagan, so... Oh! Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh. oh, I don't okay. know if he was donating for himself or... Yeah. Well, uh, we, we can talk about it. All right, so if you want to know, like, the, the, the grandfather of the Yoshi Island community is the lovable Carl Sagan. He is the mastermind. He's the one who's, like, uh, produced many, many um, emulator slowdown um, blueprints for how far we can push this game. And it really helps advance the scene. Sorry, I was like, really tough, I'm sorry, I really bad that. Yo, nice, uh, nice window there. <laughs> Alright, so in level 4-2, um, if you remember way back in 2-5, uh, we were introduced to Lakitus, but in 4-2 in now, they're going to be uh, beefed up way more annoying Lakitus now. Now they're like, they're, we're invading their hidden cave, their, their nest, and they are pissed at me. So they're going to try to attack me with all their uh, stuff. You'll see that here very, very shortly. But uh, I'm super sonic fast, I'm gonna just blast right through them. Wow. Hey. 
kill that piranha. Grab three eggs right here. Jump up, pal block, grab this, catch this, get that. Juggle it. All right, there's a really sick uh, skydiving, uh, skydiving quad egg shot, super YOLO. I didn't like mess up the first shot there earlier. <laughs> Again, it, the curse here is that I want to like explain the hype coming up, and it's like I commentate this curse myself by uh, <laughs> trying to explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it, and then I mess up doing it. But I mean, it's ideally like you know, it's more immersive to to do it as I go. But it's e it's easier to just like you know, uh, explain what happened afterward. But then you don't you don't understand it anymore. So it's like the uh, double sided uh, dagger right there. All right. So um, the the last the last section here in four two, I'm gonna do like this. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of egg shots while I fall down at full speed. So buckle up. I have a $100 donation here with a comment. Gotta see Trihex's dank tank. Yo, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, reminder. Dude, I, I stripped my first layer of battle armor. I haven't even gone full power yet. Like, I need to. I need, this is like slowing me down a little bit here. It's not even aerodynamic. Well, we got a little bit of time left here, and uh, we'll see what happens there. We're getting close, so keep those donations coming in. Uh, for Trihex to reveal his true form. And how much was that we need again for the for the tank? A thousand dollars total, but we're we're working our way up there pretty quickly. So <laughs> make it happen, folks. Let's do it. All right. So four three introduces balloon riding. Um, here. Um, Yoshi's gonna ride these cute balloons, but the balloons go slower when I ride them. So I'm gonna just jump a lot and make them go as fast as I can. And uh, in this level, there's like a, again, if you brought up way earlier about the production value, there's a, this really cool mechanic you're never going to see ever in this level at all. Uh, or you're going to see it, but I'm going to fly right over it. There's this big whoopee cushion you like blow up and you ride. That's like a super whoopee cushion balloon thingy. Unfortunately, it's really, really slow, so you're never going to get to see it, but it's pretty cool. Um, it's kind of a shame, too, because like uh, as speedrunning further breaks many, many games with like the, the new tech and the new optimizations, you're just going to see fewer and fewer of the vanilla gameplay. So it's kind of a it's kind of like a sadness in that regard, but don't worry. I have something to make up for the skipping of the cushion for you. I don't get hit again. All right, so what's my eight count right? My star count right now? Nineteen. Nineteen. I'm gonna lag a little bit right here. Good. All right, so I'm an egg short. I'm gonna uh, come right here, buy right here, get this. Get two eggs. All right, all right, so this is the final room right here. I'm gonna take this whoopee cushion thing, see it? Pass right over it. Um, I'm bad, dude. I'm bad. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to improv a little bit there. That was some sloppy tonguing. <laughs> I wanted it really, really bad, so forgive me. <laughs> this is like an epic let's play now. <laughs> right, now I just look silly. <laughs> Alright, I promise you, like, uh, regular speed runs, you don't, you, none of us really go for anything silly like that. But I couldn't resist temptation. I wanted to show you, like, I want to show you how cool the game is a, a little bit, honestly. Like, you can you can do that while losing minimal speed. I just did it really, really badly. <laughs> Don't worry. Again, I'll try to make up for it with like in another section here. Uh, thankfully, though, all right. So this next level, four four, is actually my favorite level in the entire game. It's pretty sick. It has an insane, sick layout. When I get into the castle here, uh, after this like first room right here, I'm going to. Uh, there's a big. Um, it's a four-way fork in the road where I can choose any path I want. Each room of the four directions I can choose contains a key. So I must unlock four doors to get to the boss fight. Why, why do I do that? 
And mind you, um, when you get keys, I don't know if you saw this, uh, this has been done yet in the run or not, but uh, keys consume an egg slot. Remember, Yoshi can carry six eggs at once here. So as I advance further into the level, I lose um, um, usable egg slots altogether. So the, the level gets harder in like its own like unique little way. Um, this first room here is super aggressive, so I'm just gonna let Crispy like say something while I try to mess up on it. There's he wants to get the, the break the blocks as fast as possible without causing a bunch of lag. Uh, if you go too fast, you can cause a bunch of lag and actually despawn some uh, some of the red coins in that section. I actually really dislike this level and think it's pretty bad, but Trag seems to like it. <laughs> Alright, that was that was okay. Unfortunately, um the bandit uh I had a really bad Tetris block section. That it's pretty tough because, like, the game, I don't know if you saw there, the game, like, lagged a ton during the Tetris block section because of all the eggs ricocheting everywhere. And uh, a couple of my shots didn't go as I intended, and it, uh, it, it revealed the bandit who's like, I needed that. Is it going to respawn? Yeah, cool. We have a $50 donation here that says, love the shirt, but take it off. We're getting close. It's slowing me down. You, you want to know why I failed that 4-3 uh, that super swag egg juggle? The shirt. Do a cool egg juggle right here. All right, so we have two keys right now. So that means I can have up to four eggs as I carry here. And it's going to um, increase on the limitations as I get further into the level. Uh, you may notice just now I, I tongued that wall as I was turning. Wow. Did. I did the correct egg shot, but my camera angle was bad, so it didn't it didn't have the the flower hitbox loaded, unfortunately. There, but you know, it's, it's a minimal loss, not a big deal. Anyways, so you saw that I uh, I tongued that wall. Consider it like a like a e break uh, mechanic in Yoshi's Island. Like you can you lose your speed instantly and like do like a 180 like freestyle drift there. Like rather than like slowly turn around, you instantly turn around. So it's like I don't know. Now that I brought it up, maybe you'll you'll notice I do it in like smaller sections for uh, optimization. Again. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, whenever you turn around, you're going to want to try to tongue the wall so you go instantly to zero. All right, so now we have uh, all four keys. So we're going to we're going to go hardcore and go right into the boss here uh, after I unlock these four doors. Um, the boss, you're noticing the, uh, uh, the, the, the reoccurring enemy right there, the Mills, um, they're just like, um, pan, I don't know, that's what I'm like, they're like, they're like Goombas, but cuter, I guess, they're like Kirby themed, yeah, they're like Kirby themed Goombas. <laughs> Ooh, I got the egg stir from the lava, that's cool, that's awesome. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna fight one of these like super Mills in a second here. I'm gonna go for. Um, there's a pretty aggressive strat you can do. Um, it's called. Is it called the double double? Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for the double double here, which means I'm gonna try to kill. The only way you can hurt these guys is if you ground pound them. Eggs don't do anything until they're like really, really small. So I'm gonna try to get uh, two of these. Uh, two of these mills and one ground pound. Be pretty legit if I get it. There we go. Yeah, that was actually pretty solid. Minus like room one going pretty bad and whatnot, but again, this is one of the longer levels in the game, so a lot can go wrong, a lot can go well. Not a big deal. Alright, so I want you to check out the level icon here for four or five. It is 
It is that iconic um, Chomp Rock you remember way back in 1-3 that we gave no love. Well, this is uh, called Chomp Rock Zone. This level is purely dedicated to using the Chomp Rock as much as possible. But unfortunately, uh, we speedrunners have completely broken this level, and we're not going to use the Chomp Rock at all again. So it's going to get no love again. Sad, sad day to be a Chomp Rock right now. So you'll see... Because uh, there's a lot of uh, height-based... Um, Objectives we have to do, but we can uh, we figured out ways to outsmart the game and uh, get around those without using a slow. There you go. So you saw right there that was a um, a red coin duplication glitch. I did a double dupe right there, and now I was to skip a, a slower section of the game where I don't have to go down there at all now. Again, you take my word for it. It's unfortunate I can't really even show you what uh what I skipped. Just that it was fast. Well, Trihex, things are looking good for your shirt situation because we have $250 from Pharaoh, who says, got to see Trihex go even further beyond by showing us that super dank top. We're getting close. Ooh, I'm excited. So I did that whole room right there, like totally not as intended, but I'm sure Trix and uh, Chris can probably explain that a little bit for me there. Uh, he just, he shot the baseball boy to knock him back, and then he just jumped and buffered a flutter off the ceiling and upshot the flower. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to shoot the, this like trampoline platform down and uh, make the baseball boy shoot at the flower himself, but you can skip that by just uh, doing it yourself. All right, so check it out. So 4-6 here. If you remember way back in 2-2, I explained like seven speed run terms to explain how in insane that level is. Um, this is a level that rivals the technicality of 2-2. Um, you saw in the previous level just now, uh, red coin duplication glitches. But we're gonna, this one has the most in the game. The other, the only ones I've had in so far, 2-2 uh, and uh, I forget what the other one was earlier. 4-5. 4-5? Okay, well, those had either uh, single dupes or, at most, double dupes, right? This one has five duplications total. The second to last one being a double dupe, too. So you're going to see... This means I'm going to get five extra red coins un in unintended areas in order to skip five slower to acquire red coins. And this will allow me to skip an entire room in this game, or in this level. It's pretty insane, and to give an idea of how like active this game actually is, like that this whole like discovery of skipping an entire room due to this glitch, is um pretty recent. I think this was like 2013. This was like a, a, a perfected to where it, where it is now. Let's see here. All right, so in this uh, in this next cave room, you're gonna see those um. Those reoccurring uh, sheep crab enemies with the 3 HP, they're like super annoying. I'm just gonna kill him. I uh, got an eggplant right here. I'm gonna ground pound and get max eggs. Come right here, skip him. Fire right here, get this, get max eggs, or max stars. Alright, so here we go. It's gonna be action packed. We're gonna do a double dupe and then a single dupe and get a crap load of eggs and then get everything and get out of here. We have $50 from Shadow's Temple, who says, Try Hex's shirt level, over 9,000. Wow, I'm bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, forgive me. All right, so here's what happened there. I, um, the final red coin shy guy is the one I have to I dupe a coin from. And uh, the game, you're not going to believe it, the game lagged, and I pressed right to spit it right, and it went left to the flower, and I lost it. So what that means is I was I would finish this level with one coin short, so I was doomed to 99%. Again, I'm gonna probably wait earlier. These technical levels are pretty brutal. I, most of my runs typically fail either in uh, either in 2-2, this level, or the upcoming 5-4, which I'll talk about a little bit later here. Don't worry, I'm gonna recover this. So we're gonna I'm gonna do this a little carefully now, unfortunately. Um, again, another issue too is that like uh, it's counterintuitive. Like I did it as fast as possible, which doing it too fast caused the game lag, which ate my input. So you have to like do it slow, slower than you can, which is like kind of weird to like because you do everything else as fast as possible. You gotta do that deliberately slower than you can. I don't know if I'm explaining all that well or not, but like 
don't know, just don't, don't, don't look at this run and be like, oh my god, he's playing so bad. I'm, I'm, it's really, really difficult. So I'm gonna try that again. All right, so double dupe, get him, get him, drop down. Wait right here, come back, you spawn him. I don't know if you understood the, the trials of that level. It's it's pretty difficult. Again, we got some some hot advanced techniques since the last time this was done at a GDQ. All right, so you saw here now I'm leaving with uh, six eggs. Um, I'm investing heavily in four seven. Four seven has a super duper modern route now for 2015. Um, it requires me to have a lot of eggs. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be getting um, all 20 stars without any checkpoint rings. I'll be using purely red eggs and alternative sources to get all 20 stars. So you're going to see a lot of really aggressive, really cool egg shots here, so buckle up. Hopefully it'll make up for 4-6 being bad. By the way, in case it isn't apparent by the uh, stream, we have surpassed $10,000 already. Oh. We're at $11,000 in donations, so thank you everybody who's been donating throughout uh, Yoshi's Island. And a reminder that uh, if you donate... $5 during this game, you'll be entered to win uh, some of the perlers that we're giving away. So a $5 donation or more during Yoshi's Island can enter you to win that. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, the Sonic Adventure DX run is only a couple hundred dollars away uh, from being met. That that's the uh, Big the Cat story run. Despawn the red coin. I despawn one? Yeah, just go back. Yeah. Oh, see, see, this game, man, this game. Dude, I'm glad you caught that. That would have, oh, that would have sucked. So, uh, what do you think happened there, Crispy? Why did that coin despawn? Too many sprites on the screen, that's... <laughs> this game is dumb. <laughs> so, yeah, chickens are, like, homing missiles right here. I didn't explain that earlier. They're, they're, they're pretty cool, but you're gonna if you think if you think the whole you know chicken homing missile thing is a cool mechanic, I'm, I'm gonna explore that full on in this uh, really hype auto scroller in World Five a little bit later here. But yeah, so you just so you saw proof right there that um, again the game lags, the despawn sprites. It's there's like a, a buffer point where you can't push the game too fast. It's just uh, too much going on on screen, too much optimization at times. So thankfully, uh, Chrissy was looking out for me, and we uh, skipped a, a very awkward 99% right there. That would have been very unfortunate. Um, 4-8 uh, introduces, uh, really push the whole rotating spike ball uh, thing. You can see a lot of uh, a lot of these guys right here. Oh, I'm bad. You can, uh, it's a pretty tight window, but you can uh, shoot the blocks at the right time to where the spike ball will not fall on you and hurt you. So I'm gonna tongue this uh, arrow dial through the. Uh, if you do a correct position and correct time tongue, you can tongue through um, thin enough platforms to get objects beneath them if you want to. Like I just did. That big gate hack right here. Got it. So that save ring. Um, so he shot a cloud as soon as he went through the save ring, and it like overload overwrote the the save ring actually going off and freezing them in place. But he still got the stars from that save ring. Alright, this is a sick room right here, if I get this right. Oh, dude, it bounced like... He bounced short of where I wanted him. I was gonna, it was gonna be like a... Um, a, a sick, like, double-double ground pound, kill everything, MLG, blaze it, I don't know. I mean, it would've been sick, but I didn't get it. <laughs> Almost had it, though. So, um... Uh, you're going to see the return of uh, Tetris blocks here in the, uh, the room after this one, where the eggs like ricochet infinitely. And uh, I wanted to bring up a general, it's like one of the... Uh, one of the uh, egg heavier levels here, I, I believe I used over 20 eggs throughout this entire level, which is pretty, pretty, pretty insane. 
Uh, I, I like the levels where you have to just go egg crazy. It's gonna be really cool. So I'm gonna try to make up for that um, that four three swag fail earlier. Ah, oh, man, I don't want to call it John's here, but the, <laughs> the, the TV actually has, like, a really insane uh, fog level, so I, I did that a little bit wrong there. But I, I, ideally, I was going to, like, juggle the uh, the egg through the fog, and you're going to, like, freak out, and you're going to like it, but... Ah, I didn't, I didn't get it. All right, again, I'll, I'll make up for it somewhere else, too, don't worry. I don't know, ho hopefully you're impressed here. So this, um... This boss uh, is going to become a Super Koopa, and there's going to be this like sick uh, blast-off moon jump glitch at the very end here I can do. It's pretty cool. It actually doesn't waste any time either, that's the best part. It actually saves time. out of here. Try Hex. Yo. Is, is it time? time? Is it time? It's time. Please, please power up Try Hex. Let's do it, man. Let's remove this uh, battle armor here real quick. Take it off one button. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thanks to you, bro. You made this happen right now. So, my incredibly dank tank top right here. Chat can go crazy. Oh. Got the, uh, got the Illuminati pizza right here. So like rip chat for the next like I don't know, 200 minutes. Now can we just keep the applause going on this one? I think you guys will be excited about this. We have a rather large donation here. How does five thousand dollars? <laughs> what? Five thousand dollars from Ray Novarez Jr., who I think some of you might know. Uh, he says, the GDQs are my favorite events of the year. Best of luck to all of the runners, and thank you to all the staff for putting on an awesome event. Thank you so much for that donation. Sick, sick. All right, so welcome to World 5. I, I hate Best World. world of, I hate World. Best World. Stop. You're wrong. <laughs> world 5 is terrible. World 5 is the obnoxious uh, ice physics water levels that the water temple of Yoshi's Island. Just, oh, uh, God, I hate it. However, there is, like, a, uh, there's one um, oasis in the desert of fail, which is the um, level 5-4 contains the hardest trick in the game. I, I will try my best to land it on first try. Uh, we'll explain more about that as I get closer to it. But based on how I'm doing so far, <laughs> uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, five one actually, I, I do like five one to be honest. It's a very aggressive, fast level. You're gonna see me like just go. Uh, oh, it's also level two where I don't do any checkpoint rings either. This room right here is supposed to become a helicopter. Oh, come on, camera. Yeah, you hit that uh, that uh, star that star cloud right there, or the question mark cloud, and uh, there's a helicopter bubble in there. You're supposed to turn on a cute little helicopter and get all the coins, but you can do um, you can do four specific egg shots comboed with uh, specific camera manipulation angles to uh, load the hitboxes on those red coins and skip getting the helicopter altogether. Again, unfortunately, you, don't, you, get, you can't see the original intended version to appreciate the faster version, but take my word for it. Pretty cool looking. Yeah, the penguins kind of act like bumper carts. I actually, actually didn't talk about those yet. Their official name is Bumpties. <laughs> Out of here. Oh. All right, all right. Let's see here. Okay, all right. So, um, uh, upcoming in five two. Five two actually is a very notorious level. It's the uh, it's the only level in the game that has no known profitable bonus skip. Um, be due to all right, like five two introduces like these like um, this cute gimmick. You 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 ride ski lifts, and at the very end you have to ride the ski lift into the gold ring. So it means that you have a constant like um, horizontal and vertical coordinate when the gold ring loads because you're supposed to ride a ski lift or whatever. So like 
there is like no, we haven't, or at least I haven't found a really dependable bonus skip that is slower than just riding the ski lifts altogether. Also, I, I couldn't even, <laughs> I'm doing so many things where I couldn't even go over that one. That was um, supposed to push a, a snowball and make it a jumbo snowball, like an avalanche style, to, in order to get up there, but we just used the, the enemy boosting off the penguins too to skip that puzzle altogether. So um, I'm going to ride Lakitu's Cloud here. Uh, it's a little bit faster than, uh, than, than fluttering over nothing. Being fifth gear all day. All right, so now we're going to be into the final room here. I'm going to, uh, it's going to get, we're going to, we're going to, we're supposed to, again, ride the ski lifts to do everything, but the ski lifts move really, really slow. So we're just going to, like, jump and YOLO and uh, just kind of, like, use our eggs and get everything done really, really fast. And off we go. So let's hope for the best here. This is a. Oh, hey, all right. Hey, good, good luck. All right, we're in there. I can, I can feel the, the feel the world record pace again now. I'm only I didn't lose 30 seconds there. All right, all right. So in the next level here, five three. Um, you're um, remember earlier this, this is like the ice world, so you're gonna see a lot of icy things. Um, you're gonna see ice blocks, which are the things that literally have the ice physics. I didn't bring up early here, but you saw in 5 one there like everything was like snow covered ground. Snow covered ground, you um, you like move slower through it, so it's less slow to repetitively jump through the snow, trot through the snow if you will, but it's still way slower than just like your like regular running speed. It's really really annoying. So you deal with two two flavors of like anno annoyance with like just the ground altogether in most cases of uh, World Five. And um, let's see, I think I've, I've turned to Super Mario Mario only once so far, and I feel like he needs to get a little bit more love here. You saw him last in 4-1, I believe. But we're gonna unleash the Kraken, we're gonna bring him back. And this time with aggressive platforming, too. Uh, Super Baby Mario does actually run notably faster than Yoshi. Uh, did a little, I cut that a little too close. I was kind of, actually kind of worrying, but I uh, did a little shortcut there. Where I skipped. Uh, we skipped an optional room entirely by uh, doing that really clutch back backtracking there as Baby Mario. Almost a problem there. <laughs> six, six shot right here. All right, so this uh, the final part of this level here. Uh, a totally new mechanic now. Um, only used twice in the entire game. I'm gonna transform into skiing Yoshi. And look at look at Mario's cute cap. Like it just like again the the level of detail this game has is absolutely astonishing. Uh, the ski cap, which you're only, which <laughs> you see the sprite, and you only it only gets used twice in the entire game. It's insane. Like it's two parts of two segments of two different levels, and that's it. And I'm gonna do this right here. All right, so this next level here is uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty intense. I don't know. Golden, how are you doing right now, man? What's going I'm on? I'm doing bro? pretty good. How are you, Trihex? I know, I'm just, oh, I'm just chilling. How man. are you liking Minnesota so far? Oh, dude, it's pretty sick, man. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, it really is, dude. You don't look that, uh, that comfortable. You should probably, no, dude, yeah. No, I'm yeah. going to get a little stretch there real quick. <laughs> Sorry, I, could, I couldn't resist there. <laughs> So this section here is almost done. So if you recalled earlier, I, I let it slip that 5-4 uh, um, is the one the one glimmer of coolness in this world. Uh, it contains the hardest trick in the game, actually. So like 5-4, it's the most hype level in the game. It's home to the hardest trick in the game. Um, the trick, uh, it doesn't have a creative name. We just call it the 5-4 skip. 
Um, it's gonna we're gonna take the uh, the final room in the level, the regular level, is a three minute long auto scroller. However, we can turn that into an almost 90 seconds. Uh, we almost got time in half here. A uh, 90 second shortcut. It's gonna involve uh, f almost 40 flutters above nothing, above a giant, really long death pit. I'm gonna use these bats right here. I'm gonna use four of those bats halfway into the skip in order to make it to the other half here. It's gonna be extremely dangerous. This is a new thing. This is like the biggest change, um, probably most infamous since the uh, since you saw last run in 2013. I'm gonna do my best to make sure I land it. Uh, let me tell you too. So when you do regular runs of this game, like, like, man, this is a stressful level if you're on like a good a good run pace. Pretty insane. Can all end in one one drop flutter. We have an anonymous $500 donation that says, I've been waiting for another Games Done Quick so much. Thank you all. Thanks for the donation. We also have another anonymous $60 donation that says, doing great, keep going. So, so Crispy, how, how do you... Tell me a little bit about 5-4 skip, man. What, uh, what are we in for, dude? Um, about 40 flutters of just... If you make one mistake, you're dead. Uh, like, how many runs is this, has this particular shortcut cost you? Many. <laughs> Almost every run that I've gotten to this point has died to this. <laughs> yeah, I just want to give you, really emphasize here how difficult. Um, the capital D here. This is... If I get this first try, like, oh my god. <laughs> I have, I'm have. I'm, I'm, com I'm confident. I'm confident. I've practiced this a ton, but... <laughs> let me tell you. Oh, man. You got this. Dude, dude, yeah, dude. It's free, man. It's free. We got that. All right. Dude, Tom stood still there for like about a half a minute. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot to breathe too a little bit there. <laughs> now that was a little bit sloppy, unfortunately. That was a... <laughs> oh man, I did that so bad too. Like, I'm surprised actually. You saw that the, um, the slime platform actually was catching up to me a little bit there. That tells you how, like, how bad I did it. <laughs> but it's all good. We got it on first try though, so it's no big deal. Let's see if I get this uh, boss killed real quick. All right, all right. So to explain there, Slugging the Unshaven, he's like a he's a super 
bullet sponge. It usually requires about 15 eggs to kill normally. However, I'm like, I'm despawning them. I'm using very specific camera manipulation cues right here. You despawn Sluggy, then you fire the egg, and then you move the camera to the right, and you respawn Sluggy while the egg is traveling through where his heart would be. If that makes sense? So you penetrate his, like, his, like, heart, like, right away. Normally you have to, like, penetrate his, like, his gooey exoskeleton thingy to, to kill him. So that's why I got him, I, I killed him with four eggs rather than, uh, than 15. That was pretty sick. That's actually, that actually was a perfect boss fight, actually. So, uh, 5-5, five, five, I think we can, uh, tone it, tone it down a little bit now. 5-5 five, five introduces, uh, these seagull-looking enemies right here. Um, you're gonna see, uh, their, their main gimmick is they're just uh, kind of, like, all in the way. They, they're always, like, in a giant group. So, they're, like, they're gonna, like, infest the screen. So there's gonna be, like, this really intense, uh, helicopter section coming up here where I have to, like, dodge, like, a million goonies. Uh, goonies? What are they, what are they called, Crispy? Uh, they're Goonies, yeah. Oh, okay. Goonies, Seagulls. <laughs> Same difference, right? Not really. So, I know you're like just paralyzed by hype, but it's helicopter skip right here, or helicopter ride right here, but I'm gonna let my man Golden uh, rock the mic and give you the helicopter tour of donations. All right, we have quite a few here, so that's good. We have $20 from Taman, uh, who says, I've come from North Dakota to attend my first GDQ, and Trihex is the chillest bro I've ever seen. Put this money towards the lost levels of Donkey Kong Country 3, which is arguably a better game than 2. Uh, that, by the way, the, the lost levels for Donkey Kong Country 3, that's later today, so if you want that to happen, get your donations in for that as soon as possible. We've got $30 from Coinu93, who says, This is my second year catching GDQs in person, but it's my first time. Uh, watching after becoming a speedrunner myself. Looking forward to all the crazy runs. Good luck to everyone. All right, so we're gonna log this red switch here. We're gonna just ride this. Notice I have a, uh, an enemy in my mouth right now. I have the, the little yellow cactus ball, the piranha spit at me. Shoot that flower off screen. I'm gonna use that for the bonus skip right there. All right, so I recommend that everyone right now, dude, get your donations in because we have a lot of time to kill because if you remember way back in World 1, 1-5, one um, that was an auto-scroller. There's only three in the entire game, but the next one is coming up next in 5-6 uh, here. So um, what I'll say before I get started here, I'm gonna let Golden just like go crazy on all your hype donations. I, um, if you remember earlier in 4-7, four, four, there was chickens, right? Chickens act as homing missiles. So I'm going to try to do something really cool at the later half of this auto scroller section and try to get two, egg, uh, two, two chickens to infinitely loop around each other and around me. Uh, kind of like a, like, a, like a shield, sort of. It'll be pretty cool. It looks really, really cool. But in the meantime, dude, listen to the soothing sounds of Golden on the mic. Oh, well, thank you so much, Trihex. I just appreciate that over here. We've got $100 from Patrick T. Four, who says, first time actually donating consistent source of epic entertainment. Thank you for that. $50 from Sense545, who says, keep up the good workouts. $30 from Carrie Madonna. Hooray for Summer Games. HDQ did amazing in January. Let's make it happen for Doctors Without Borders. Good luck, Trihex from Vancouver. Great to see you opening the event. P.S. Uh, nice claw face technique. Swag. <laughs> yeah, it's input. Uh, we've got $75 from Troy, who says, Games done quick is an awesome way to help out and show off some insane gaming skills. Keep up the great work. Shout out to my homie Braven, who I'm sure is watching. We have $50 from Wired Mind. Hey, SGDQ, I've watched some of the past streams, but this year is the first time I really have time to watch as much as I want. Keep up the good work. You're doing an amazing job. Also, try Hex Hype. $30 from an anonymous donor who uh, wants Big the Cat says, show me some love for Sonic Adventure DX. And we have $50 from uh, another anonymous donor who says, Yoshi's Island was my first game that I ever played on my SNES when I was 11 years old. I'm glad I can see awesome, an awesome speedrun today, and I hope for the best for all the speedrunners. Good luck, everyone. Go for it, Yoshi. And please don't hate Poochie. He's a nice dog. We have $50 uh, from Buckethead. Hey, GDQ. Been watching for about three years now and enjoy it every time. Shoutouts to the amazing speedrunners and volunteer staff. We have a $200 donation from uh, pgurv 12 Trihex Hype. Great way to start off SGDQ. Good luck, all. And $100 from Jared and Jess, who said, First time donating to SGDQ. Looking forward to all the runs this week. 
and hearing Spike Vegeta's sultry voice. I think you'll hear that a time or two uh, throughout the marathon. It says, put $50 towards the Dark Souls two two players, one controller run, and $50 to 100%ing the best RPG of all time, Chrono Trigger. And again, a reminder to those of you watching, uh, you know, you can support the stream in ways aside from donating as well. You can uh, host the channel on your own Twitch page. You can also uh, tweet about us. Use the hashtag SGDQ2015. Uh, subscribing in the Twitch channel uh, for Games Done Quick will send 100% uh, of the subscription uh, proceeds to Doctors Without Borders, and you'll get some cool emotes in return. We've got $100 from Atrophius, who says, For the 5-4 skip and my favorite Yoshi runner, awesome start to SGDQ. We actually have a lot of donations coming in just because of that 5-4 skip, so pretty impressive. Uh, $50 from Mindez, who says, Is it really that harmful to the body to just stay up for seven days straight watching SGDQ? I think you're about to find out. $50 from Hippation, who says, Thanks for brightening up my weekend and the coming week with great games. We have $50 from Oasis. There is only one way to play Resident Evil 4, and that is professional mode, so have $50 to make it happen. Shout out to all the lovelies in IRC, as well as to Carcinogen for his Nemesis run later, and to Golden's absolutely amazing voice, which was sorely missed months ago at AGDQ. I didn't, I didn't put that in there, by the way. That's, that's <laughs> it's written in the comment, just a disclaimer. It says, also, what do you call a group of phys physicians that aren't kleptomaniacs, doctors without hoarders? <laughs> Okay, the puns are beginning. The puns are beginning. There you go. We'll throw it back to you, Trihex. You got want that? You got it. I nice got catch. It. I got nice it. catch. All right, so all right, so good stuff, by the way. All right, so coming up next in five seven, um, it takes what we established in five five with the the seagulls and the um, and whatnot, and uh, amplifies it further here now. So now you're gonna see uh, the the seagulls slash goonies, but now rather than be on the ground and be safe, it's now gonna be above nothing and uh, just 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 like really small uh, platforms like that yellow one right there. Uh, this level is actually pretty pretty cool because there's a um there is actually you know how every level has five flowers this one actually has a six flower the developers put it in I guess when debugging or creating the level and they never took it out but it's hidden uh, very far off camera but due to using a, a hacked camera with a with a, a, a hacked camera Yoshi Island ROM on emulator we um the Yoshi Island speedrun team has discovered a, a consistent way to hit this flower which allows us to skip the uh, you, you saw it earlier I walked past that uh, pipe room there was a, there was a room in that pipe. Uh, and I skipped that entire length, so it's going to save 30 seconds right here if I get this on first try. I did get it. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Let's try again. There we go. So, I don't know if you, can hear, you can hear right there, it's all audio cue only. You can see the... Uh, like, the, uh, like uh, it looks kind of weird. Like, the camera is, like, locked, and you can't even, like, push the camera to see the, uh, the flower at all. You just have to, like, do that specific shot within in range. Again, it's unfortunate. Like, so I, I really recommend that you play this game because like, you you will appreciate so much more of what's going on in this game. Just like, you're just yeah, sure it looks cool, but oh, man, you're missing out on so much of the depth, the nitty gritty, the delicious um, Twinkie filling, if you will. This level's a little obnoxious. I hope I don't get the. Uh, all right, go ahead. Get, I can go on a skip. All right, that level's like really, really weird. The um, the falling rocks. Uh, explain that one, Crispy. How does that work exactly? The falling rocks. Uh, if you jump too quick or you try to jump too quickly, it'll eat your input entirely. And uh, like there's a, a certain frame. If you try to jump, it won't input jump, and you'll just keep walking and fall off the the platform. Yeah. So it rewards like it punishes like swift reaction like was everything else in this game is all about swift reaction and but those those rocks are the complete opposite you have to like deliberately not jump as fast as possible or whatever like it's uh, I hate them I hate them so much All right, so 5-8 um, has an aggressive combination of everything you've seen established so far in World 5. So you're gonna see, uh, you're gonna see Goonies. You're gonna see those, uh, these like these cool-looking spike ball wielding shy guys just like spinning their wannabe helicopter blades all around. 
this new thing right here, the Golden Bullet Bill, he's a, uh, the Golden Bullet Bill will ricochet off of walls and just kind of like sit there and be all in your way forever. He also follows you too, he's, he's, he's like, he wants to like say hi and hurt you, whatever. Um, but the, 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 the important to me in this level though, you're gonna see uh, these, uh, these ravens. Look at this lag, dude. Oh my god, I can't work with this right now. Intense section right there. I fired, I probably fired too many eggs too quickly, or had my, uh, my arrow dial wrong there, but letting you know the lag is real. Yeah, so these little ravens right here, they kind of circle around the little spheres and just kind of like, you can't eat them, you can only just like hop on them. But uh, keep that in mind though. So we're, on, we're before we get to the boss though. There's this uh, we got this really uh, anti-hype choo-choo train right here. So I'm gonna throw the, throw the rock right back at Golden. If anything cool to say? All right, uh, I will gladly accept that. And I, I just want to point out to you, I think this is a pretty good feeling. So I want you to be proud of yourself for this because of the five four skip. You're getting a bunch of big donations in uh, for accomplishing that. So feel good about that. We got hundred and fifty dollars here from an anonymous donor who said, for that ridiculous trick on the first try. Thank you for uh, that donation. We also have $50 from an anonymous donor who says, Great games and great runs. Shoutouts to Trihex with a great start to the marathon. Good luck to all the runners. $55 from Tasty Pixel who says, Hey everybody, I love this event and what it stands for. Fun, charity, and community. Thanks to all the staff, runners, and donators who make collecting so much money for charity possible. You are great. Okay, I can still do this. All right, all right. Give me some some safety shots here, uh, Crispy. Oh my God, I'm bad. Not that. <laughs> Not that. All right. Oh no, am I, am, I, am, I, am I stuck here now? All right, so I I, I <laughs> yeah I messed up tremendously right there. I have to kill myself, yep. unfortunately. I uh, I had no way to recover to get 30 stars. I got hit twice. I can't even kill myself right now. Look at this. Ah, uh, dude. Um. Okay, so the problem there, okay, it's one of those um, timing sequential sections. So if you mess up one part, or if you're late for one part, the where the goonies are going to be, where the enemies are going to be, it's all thrown off. So I got hit once, and I, I had the synchronization wrong, so I got hit by everything else, and I couldn't recover. That's my fault, though. All right, so this time I won't, uh, I won't get hit by anything, and it'll be really good. I was to save that, right? Out of here, 28, okay, I'm good. There you go. Oh, dude, this section is. <sighs> All right, the thing about that section, like, I can, I know what to do. Like, I have like the autopilot muscle memory to just like attack it. But like, I, uh, you know, kind of like flowchart, if you will. But I always, uh, I execute it too soon. When you see me get hit, it's me, it's me tonguing too soon, or it's me tonguing during a jump or whatever. Like, it's a, uh, you have to, I have to slow down. I know that sounds like really like uh, conveniently. Um, I'm too good to get this. This part right or whatever, but like, I don't know. Explain that. Explain the, uh, the the dynamics of muscle memory if you can. Like, <laughs> um. <laughs> all right. Well, if you, you do a section a lot, you, like it, be it becomes ingrained into like your subconscious, and you just like do it over and over again, and you're not even thinking when you do it, so you don't adjust for the small mistakes or differences you do in that level. Does that makes sense. Yeah. So that's why I got hit there. Unfortunately, sorry about that. Anyways, though, that was a good boss fight, so we're out of here. You can see here, obviously, too, the, um, the, the, um, where maybe uh, Mario Galaxy series got inspired by uh, this one here. Because, you know, this is, remember this is a game made in 95, and you see, like, the, the, the gravitational, spherical-based um, uh, objectives here with fighting the boss. But we're done here. We're out of, we're out of uh, World 8, world, or World 5. World 5 is, is done. We're, we're good. We're free. So as we approach uh, the uh, World 6 here, the uh, final world, let's see if we can... Uh, get to $20,000 donated here. I'm going to throw that challenge out there. We're pretty close already. have been doing very good on donations. Uh, but let's see if we can get to that $20,000 mark by the end of Yoshi's Island. We've got $75 here from Jakesa, who says, Great cause and great gameplay. Keep up the good work. And here's to hoping we can do even better than last year. And $100 from Yerman Danielson, who says, Hi all, it's finally GDQ time again. Uh, so I can't break with tradition. Here's my usual $100. Thank God for the awesome work you are all doing. Reader chooses where this goes. And we've got $50 from Bad Robot, who says, Dank Tank Hype. 
Thanks for starting with a 100% game, SGDQ. Here's 50 bucks for the 100% link to the past run. Oh, keep it going. You got another like 30 seconds. All right, all right. Uh, we've got $101 from Poochie EXE. Yoshi's Island will always be one of my favorite games, and I always love seeing it broken into a million pieces every time. Here's $100 for the amazing 100% run. And of course, an extra dollar because extra one. Poochie ain't stupid. Keep up the brilliant work, Trihex, especially those crazy egg shots and all that swag. Uh, runner's choice, please. Oh, d ooh, runner's choice. Ooh, ooh. I, I didn't even think about that, dude. Um, Is Big the Cat? How's that doing right now? I believe that's already been met, actually. Yeah, we've ooh, got Big snap. the Cat in there. Dang. Um, so wait, uh, Sonic Boom's coming up next, right? That is correct. Is there anything related to Sonic Boom, incentive-wise? You could add something. <laughs> oh, I could. <laughs> Oh, I have to sit on. It. I have to I have to look and see. I'm I'm sorry. I didn't have the I didn't have a, a prepared answer to that question. We'll figure it out question. later. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyways, okay. So we're in World Six right now, and uh, it's generally it's got that uh, that fire castle theme to it. Uh, I went for a, a really unforgiving egg shot there, and I uh, aimed a little bit too high. I didn't get it. But if, if I did it correctly, you saw me pushing that crate to get into those uh, those red coins in that little crevice there. I uh, It was going to slide past the crate, because for some reason the eggs don't collide with the crates all, at, at all. That I uh, hit that flower off screen right there. It's a pretty insane... This is actually, this level has, in my opinion, the hardest bonus skip in the game of the ones that are doable. It's pretty, pretty specific. I'm gonna try to get it. All right, cool. We'll see what, see what happens now. If things go well, I should get the bottom left dot. Nice, All right, cool. We're in there. Awesome, awesome. Now, like, okay, so let's see. How do I even, how do I explain how hard that is? Like, you have to, you can't go full speed because then you're going too fast. You can't go too slow because then you won't make the jump. You, you, you want to move the tap taps, but they're like in the way. Like it's, oh my god, it's so annoying. I don't know, Crispy, help me out here. How, explain that one for me. It's just... Or just t tell me how annoying it is. How, how annoying is it? It's very annoying. <laughs> alright, alright, so in 6-2 here, you're going to see these new enemies, the, uh, these bandits with the, uh, the masks on. The bandits are unique in that they, they literally, when you, when you hit by them, they steal Baby Mario and run away. They, they're bandits, they steal. They're just, they're like, they're outlaws like that. And not only that, though, they have HP, too. They have, uh, oh, I missed that. Uh, they have three HP. Um, and I believe, uh, I believe eggs don't even, ki don't even hurt them. You have to, like, jump on his head three times to kill yeah. him. He's, he's a pretty, he's a pretty annoying enemy. So you're seeing now the introduction of just, like, these, like, super, superhuman, uh, enemies now about the levels here. Like, even these, um, even those, uh, those masked, those skull, skull head rats, or whatever they're called, those have two HP. See, uh, and the baseball boys too. I like that, that cool dynamic there. The enemies interact with each other. I spit the, the rat at the baseball boy and he batted it away. That's pretty cool. Alright, so this is going to be a really intense Big Mario section here. I'm going to try to uh, do this one shortcut. Hopefully I get it. Oh, I didn't get it. It's pretty tight actually. It's like all off screen. Tough to uh, get correct. But if I did it right, I was gonna like um, I was gonna cape just above that um that that uh, stone wall that I just barely missed. A little close there, but it's all good. I, but Chris, we had a heart attack just now, I bet. <laughs> like I um I should be like in mid jump when I untransform, but I was like on my way down to dying above the spikes. But thankfully I uh they worked out fine, so it's all good. Um, so if you saw there, there was um, there are the little small stars that uh, replenish Super Baby Mario's um, presence, if you will. I skipped the last one because you cannot finish a level as Super Baby Mario, so it's a little bit faster to actually skip that, untransform early, and then just flutter over the spikes, um, like Rambo or whatever, and then make it to the gold ring faster. Um, Six three introduces uh, spinning logs. Spinning logs uh, have a unique property. They uh, just kind of like they're they're to troll you, but however, if you jump into them or flutter into them, they send you upward immediately. So we use that to our advantage to make an otherwise intended random uh, nuisance into a calculated speed factor. 
Also fuzzies. Oh crap. Alright, I'm gonna get drunk now. Whatever. And die. Oh, oh crap. Oh, they were good. Just gonna come back here. Let me get really drunk too. Oh. Yeah, alright. I'm oh, sorry, I tried there. That was. I didn't mean to. Uh, I'm playing so bad right now. Okay, okay. I'll try that again. Well, you got your you got your wish, Chad. You got your uh, you got your fuzzies for the, for the run. So yeah, clearly you can see the benefit here. Where if I have eggs, I can just shoot all these coins and get it done way faster. So when you die, it's like you have to do it. Look at this spawn. It's terrible. The fuzzies always spawn random, by the way. So it's like a, a test of adaptability to deal with them. Um, it's ideally fastest to not use eggs when going through there, because I'm going to have to get eggs from this egg block anyway. Alright. This last section is actually pretty fast. We're going to, um, lots of, uh, lots of quick egg shots, lots of quick navigation. So the next level, the final uh, fortress in the game, 6-4, uh, it's the only level, it's actually got a lot of unique properties here. It's actually, it's, I keep saying actually a lot, I'm sorry about that. Um, it is the only level that has mid-bosses in its design, and it's, uh, if you played how it's intended, it's probably one of the long, probably the longest non-auto-scroller in the game, if I had to argue that, right? It's like a, like if you played this level completely it's intended, it's probably like an eight minute long level. It's, a, it's, it's pretty insane. You have to fight uh, two. If you remember in one eight, the uh, Slavo, the S Slavo the Slime, mm -hmm. saying it right, um, the, the 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 earlier like the Bullet Sponge or whatever, you have to fight two of him. Each of them unlocks a, a key to unlock uh, two two specific uh, pipes in order to get into. You'll see a little bit later. Don't worry, I'll show you what I'm talking about. However, um, um, I want to say like. 2007. I think I think I discovered this actually. I don't even remember. It's been so long now. You can you can jump over a certain uh, platform and skip requiring the second key entirely. So I'm only gonna fight the uh, this mid boss, the first mid boss. I'm not gonna visit the second one at all. We have an eight dollar donation from Chris Shear. Oh God! <laughs> it says, "Just wanted to say I missed you, Trihex, and oh, Mama God. Trihex is waiting for you to get home to give you a spanking for your room not being clean." Oh my God! <laughs> all right, first of all, I don't know who Chris Shear. Why, why are you reading these like epic, like bait zero out of ten troll donations right now? They got important ones. Like why? Why read his? Like. <laughs> <laughs> no, Chris here's my uh, my roommate. Like, uh, yo, what's up? What's up, fam? He goes on to say that uh, he misses you and good luck. Love, Chris and Jalen. Oh, dude, that's that's sweet. Okay, all right. So we're in this like big uh, dark maze. You have to like navigate a hundred different rooms. Half of them have like unimportant stuff, but the ones I'm going through the ones that have like the red ones. I have to get the re require and whatnot. Uh, notice this uh, cork um, blocking the uh, the pipe there. That's the one that I, I was supposed to visit the second mid boss to get the key to unlock. But you're gonna see me um, go to the third story after this room right here and do a certain um, uh, a cer I'm do a perfect flutter. So it's a three frame window to uh, get an extra pixel of height to just get right above the ledge so I can skip that skip having to unlock that pipe altogether. If, I'm, if it sounds like a lot of gibberish, don't worry. I'll uh, you'll, you'll understand very very soon. And then um, we're gonna go over the uh, the boss here very shortly. I think I have enough eggs, dude. How many eggs do I have? I think I have right. Okay, now I have four. Where are you going? Okay, we're good. There you go. Okay, so I have five eggs right now. Um, now, <laughs> and everyone's always hyped for the lava skip. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do lava skip. Let me try my best here. Get that on first try real quick. We 
right now. Cool. <laughs> However, the problem is I, uh, cause I shot that egg too early and it didn't hit the flower, hit the stupid bone, bone fish thingy or whatever. I don't have enough eggs to do the, the, the new strat I want to show you, the quick kill. So I gotta do like the, the lame backup strat. Uh, so now, while that seemed fast, that was like the, the, the backup strat, the, the, the quick kill is like, it's four A's, it's like one, two, three, bam, he's already dead, like before you can see it, like he just falls. So that one requires him to jump, and then I, I shoot an egg at him, he falls into the lava pit. The, um, the quick kill, he like just immediately falls from, like you, you, you actually get rid of the Tetris blocks beneath him, and he immediately falls into the lava. So unfortunately I didn't get it this time, but it's all good though. It's all good. So we're in, now we're at the, the final auto scroller of the game. So we're gonna we're gonna take things out of fifth gear and slow it down to just cruise control now with the soothing sounds of DJ Golden on the mic. Rocket, bro, you got like five minutes, dude. Hit me up. I I'd like to start by saying that you guys uh, pulled through on the challenge. We've already passed twenty thousand dollars and we're only in six five at the moment. So thank you all for doing that. Uh, we get a we can get some clapping for that, some applause. That'd be there. We go. See, see, here's the thing. You guys, you guys are on camera now. You got to act excited. There we go. Uh, and we do have a lot of donations here too. So fifty dollars from Yay. It's Dan. Says I had no idea Games Done Quick was starting today, so I'm glad I managed to catch it. Good luck. Have fun to everyone participating and watching. Twenty dollars from Rocking Roll. I accidentally found the stream, and the trip down memory lane is just awesome. Greetings from Germany. We have five dollars from Paxis. Greetings from Germany. Uh, did no one realize that the stream has more than 100,000 viewers? We have an anonymous $30 donation. I've watched archived runs on YouTube. This is the first time I've caught the show live. Super awesome run from Trihex to start and a broken Sonic game to follow. Good stuff. Here's to the Lost World in Donkey Kong Country 3. We have $400 from JD98 who says, Let's go Glitchy Kong. $51 from Nick G213. Thank you all for the awesome SGDQ entertainment. Shoutouts to Trihex for being inspiring and cool. $50 from Co Musician. Uh, it's always great to see that the uh, SGDQ is here already, supporting a great cause, and what better way to do it than with some amazing games. Thank you all for helping so many people. And $100 from Revenant, who says, Here's hoping this year's SGDQ raises more than any year before. We have $50 from the Reed family. Uh, I've been gaming for over 25 years, and it makes me incredibly happy and proud at what our community sets out to accomplish together. It's been a joy to watch gaming blossom into what it is today, and it's wonderful to see gamers constantly giving back to those around them. Take care, everyone, and happy playing. $100 from an anonymous donor who says, SGDQ is one of the best reasons to sleep uh, as less as possible. I'm looking forward to DKC 1 and 3, so here's $100 for the Lost World. Great event and a great cause. We have $100 from Herblatt, who says, Shoutouts to all the runners and crew. Keep up the great work. Donation goes towards two players, one controller in Dark Souls 2. And since we already reached the $20,000, would it be so much to ask if we could maybe go for $25,000 by the end of the run? Is that possible? Do you think we can make that happen? I believe we can. Oh, dude, I think we definitely can, dude. I, I like think we can make it happen. So there's the, there's the uh, extended challenge for you keep those donations coming in. And a reminder that if you donate at least $5 during Yoshi's Island, you'll be entered to win uh, some Yoshi's Island Perlers that are only available if you donate now. Uh, and beyond that, we also have grand prizes that persist throughout the entire marathon that you're eligible for uh, if you donate the minimum amount for those. And those are scrolling on the bottom of your screen there, so you should be able to see them pop up on the stream the necessary amount that you need to donate. You still got time if you want to, uh, I have like another room of just super swag now. All right, I'm waiting on a refresh here, so I'll just uh, give an opportunity to talk a little bit about Doctors Without Borders. Um, just to give you guys an idea of what your donation dollars can do, $10 a month uh, can purchase life-saving treatment for 10 young children suffering from malaria. $15 a month can purchase a month of clean water for eight refugee families. $30 a month can purchase a month of therapeutic food to treat a severely malnourished child. 
and $60 a month can purchase supplies to make eight emergency burn dressings in a conflict or disaster. So your money goes uh, a long way. Even if it doesn't seem like you're donating a lot, you're, you're contributing uh, greatly because those tiny donations add up. We have $20 from Tony235, who says, Shoutouts to Trihex and the Dank Tank Percent Run. Also, remember, guys, save the animals, not the frames. Also, let's hope we can get that 100% Chrono Trigger run. $30 from Tukimoshi, who says, Just came to support my boy Trihex. He's an awesome streamer who truly is an exemplary role model for the community. Thanks for running these games for a good cause. I've helped out with charities like Desert Bus, and this is truly one of the best. Let's get excited for Lost World in Donkey Kong Country 3. And we have $50 from Sholba who says, Thank you for a super entertaining speedrun, Trihex. I guess I'm going to watch way too much SGDQ. SGDQ, that's getting tough to say, uh, on work this week. All right, so here we go. So this final room here actually can... It's a frame-perfect jump. Like, he has to jump as soon as he touches the ground so the screen doesn't trigger this auto-scroller. Yeah, so by doing a frame perfect jump right here, the camera doesn't pan up, and so the game it never triggers that I'm gonna start the auto scroller. So this section here saves 30 seconds. It's like 25 to 30 seconds, something like that. Yeah, so this is supposed to be an auto scroller right here, like the rest of the level, but we skip that by doing that frame perfect trick here. Oops. So actually, we are uh, going to be hitting the uh, the end of the run moderately soon. Um, see, while we got a little bit of downtime here, uh, so I'm going to be getting to six eight. You know, the expected final level of the game, the final boss. But the run is not done in six eight. If you remember, way earlier after World Three, we did the first half of the extras. We did a uh, three three E, two E, and one E. You unlock the extras when you get 100% on all of the regular levels in that given world. So six one through six eight, once I get 100% there, I'll unlock six E. So after the final boss fight, I'm going to, um, and I'll explain the game when I get a little bit later on into it, but uh, you know, we're gonna, we have more levels to do after the final boss. So 6-6, six, six, um, it, uh, it has a, I wouldn't call it backtracking, but there's like a, you have to do like two laps around the entire level to get all the, uh, all the uh, red coins and flowers in the intended manner. However, uh, oh, I mean, so, so much going on right here. Like, I got the, uh, just, like, got the key there early. That that skipped the entire like first room right there. That saves like, like, ooh, like a minute. Quite a bit of time. Yeah, like it's been so long. I haven't done that in forever. I don't even remember how long it takes. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna get through uh, everything in one lap here. Um, thanks to uh, this really well hidden key right there. I, I get that. Uh, I get this early, and then we're gonna do some other some other nifty things here in this uh, yellow room. Just buckle up. Get those two red coins uh, almost off screen right there. Gonna uh, red egg that flower for two stars. Red egg this star cloud for two more stars. Should be at 26. I'm at 24. Okay, I'm short two. Hmm. I'm short two, actually. It's all good. We'll work it out. We can recover that easily. Here, spit him out, grab him, grab him again, up spit, hit me boost, red egg, red egg again, I'm at 28, and I'm gonna, uh, in this next one I'm gonna do a 9 o'clock backward shot, catch the ricochet, have that red egg to back up to get st two more stars. And then use that, shoot that red egg against that flower to get the final two stars right there, drop down, lots of lag, boom, we're out of here. Okay. Then we're gonna, if you remember in 2 2, I did this uh, toady skip. I'm gonna come right here, spit him up. There you go. Swag. <laughs> that egg shot wasn't required, I did it because it was cool. <laughs> Alright, and we're, at, and we're out of this level pretty much now. Um, this is another terrain based bonus skip. And 6-6 six, six is done. I actually do enjoy 6-6 six, six a lot. I wish I could show you, like, it's tough to explain because, like, the level is so broken now. I, can't, I, I don't really even remember how the intended route is for this level. But you're supposed to do, like, two big laps around the entire thing to collect everything. But you saw there you got it all done, just one lap. All right, so I actually, I hate this level. I hate 6-7. It's, like, really, really aggravating. 
pretty much 6-7 is like a hardcore version of 4-3. If you remember, that was the, um, the whoopee cushion level with the, the time platforms. They have like a number beneath them. So yeah, now I get to uh, do time platforms while having to chain chop or chase me. There's like a, I want to say throughout most of the level, there's like nothing beneath me. There's going to be no, no safe ground. It's all like death pit. You know, pretty, pretty brutal. I'm jumping forward here to load the green platform early, as you saw there, so I can like get it. the camera up so I can, uh, again, we're loading, well, I, I didn't do it correctly there, but if you do it right, you can load these green platforms early so they don't have to be waiting on them. You can just, like, get that flower off screen. And another surprise. Big old chain chomp gonna chase me again, but thankfully we're out of there. Alright, so the next room here, um, a lot of coins on screen, a lot of enemies and sprites on screen. So this level's this section is really prone to despawning red coins. So I do this section here a little slower than I could. Now you're supposed to obviously ride the platform as you go down, but you know you can just free fall, which is like way faster. So just like pretty much again, you're gonna be skydiving while shooting eggs every direction to to get what you need to get out of there. This, uh, this section here is uh, pretty much a miniature auto-scroller, but there's something we can do in the downtime. We can, uh, I don't have max stars yet, so I can you know, acquire some, uh, some red eggs if I need. And I'm going um, to use these tap-taps here, which have infinite HP. They can't be killed, actually, so I'm going to use these guys. I'd also like to point out that uh the second challenge has been met now. We've passed $25,000 for Yoshi's Island, so we are uh, off to a great start here at SGDQ. Thank you. We have $25 from Barbara R, who says Dark Souls, uh, because my sister and me often played together with one controller as kids, Zelda, because I love the game series. All right, this one's a little bit puzzling here, actually. This is a, uh, another uh, Super Baby Mario section, but it's like really, really short. Uh, it's, it's bittersweet. You, you kind of wish you can do more with the section, but you just kind of just run forward and like kill all the bandits. Baby Mario killing bandits is a nice touch. Um, I'm not sure how this works exactly, but the cactus ball, when you spit it into the... Oh, whoops. Okay, alright, yeah. good. That was kind of weird, that, the whole thing was didn't go as I expected it to, but it's fine. So yeah, uh, the cactus ball's gate hack, the pinball gates for some reason, um, I'm not even quite sure how that works actually. I didn't discover that. It's dependent on uh, him having leftward momentum. When you spit him against the gate, he bounces back towards you, and you spit him in again, and he uh, has backwards momentum. Uh, oh, so he like slips past the gate and trips yeah. the gate, and then you went through yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's that's tight. All right, all right. So here we are, six eight. We're at the front door of the big intimidating flamethrower infested <laughs> level that is Final Bowser. Some pretty cool things here. But uh, it's, it's actually going to be a glorified auto scroller until I get to Baby Bowser. So once again, until then, I'm going to let I'm like Golden Rock and Light. Talk All right, to, talk well, to me. Sing I think to me. I think you might know this person here. We've got thirty dollars from Tafokins. Says love you, Trihex from the Smash community. Yo, Tafo, dude, shout out to dude, shout out to the melee community, man. shout out to the Smash community all together, dude. Dude, me and them, family, mad tight. Dude, Toph, Scar, dude, all the melee gods, Mango, it's my homie. Team USA all day, like, dude, that's that's love right there. They had a blast with them in Evo recently, like that was sick. All right, so I'm uh, again. I, I, if you saw there, I did a a, a a visual cue shot to get door number four of the rotating door platforms. Door number four is like the free door where you get all like all the coins and free stuff. So now, I'm, uh, so I get to here way sooner. This is the the really trollish Kamek auto scroller. 
Um, the only thing I can really do here is uh, I can get 30 stars early if he gives me um, a Shy Guy. You know, I can make a bunch of red eggs and I can just like pound them into a Shy Guy all day and make stars for free, which will skip, which will save one second by skipping checkpoint ring. But beyond that, I can't do much else. So we'll let Golden talk some more. Tell me, tell me some more about donations, man. All right. Well, we we keep getting them. That's good. So we have ten dollars from uh, Mr. Moogle, who says shoutouts to Trihex, Skybills, and everyone else running this week. Love SGDQ. Uh, an anonymous donor donated one hundred dollars, saying, "Got to keep up my one hundred dollar tradition for every GDQ that I get the chance to watch. Awesome cause, unbelievable skill, Trihex. Keep up the amazing work, everyone." Uh. We have $105 from Dios, who says, Thrilled to donate for a worthy cause. We have $500 from Cabs. Ah, my biannual wallet lightning. I look forward to a week of awesome gaming uh, among a generous community. $10 from Dennis Tan, who says, One of the coolest events of the year. Massive love and hype to everyone who helps making the world just a little bit better. Also, Trihex, Trihex has an aimbot. <laughs> $15 from Matt Advance, who says, Always great to see Trihex humiliate the Yoshi's Island bosses. Shout out to B-Dog for introducing me to GDQ. And $50 from Joe Rombi, who says, Here's the start of a great event. We are very close to $30,000. And it is entirely possible that it could happen before the clock stops in this run. So keep it up, everybody. Thank you for donating. All right, so this is uh, this is Japanese here, but it's a really important translation. Oh no, Yoshi, what are you doing here? And then, of course, you, you've now awakened, uh... Oh dear, you've awakened Baby Bowser, sir! And then he, like, Baby Bowser wakes up, stomps on him, kicks him to the curb. Has some really iconic dialogue here. What's that? Is that a green donkey? And he wants to kill me. But I'm gonna style him a little bit right here. Alright, so I want you to understand here, okay, so we're playing a 16-bit game right now, and this music is absolutely godlike. Here is like the, just, just take it all in for a second, just like, the, how epic Final Bowser theme is, like, this like sick uh, guitar solo, just, oh my god, it's so good. Well, I'm gonna let it go, but real quick here, um, so when I'm fighting uh, Final Bowser, I'm using the, the skylines as visual cue for where I want to aim. I'm gonna try to go for a perfect fight if I can, which means no missed shots, but I have to get the first shot right. If the first shot is not hit, Bowser will have already been moving, and I'm not gonna have the, the, um... Wow, that was... <laughs> that was really misleading, actually. <sighs> really? Yeah, this fight's actually really hard. Especially mess up the fight altogether. So again, we're gonna reset the end of that boss fight. Unfortunately, I didn't get it. That's, that really sucks. I actually... I slicked myself out. I actually had the good fight going, and I didn't know that egg was going to hit it. The one that you, like, ooed at. <laughs> that, 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 they even threw me off that it hit, honestly. It's all good, though. Um, maybe next time we'll get it. All right, so I reset after the final hit confirms to, uh, to skip the credits, because the credits are kind of slow anyway. It's really good music, but it's, it's really, really slow. And we're going to move on to doing the final three levels in the game. Uh, I have 6E, 5E, and 4E, but I'm not going to do them in the backwards descending order you expect. I'm going to do 6E, then 4E, and then 5E. Remember that um, eggs carry over between levels here, and 6E is an egg-plentiful level, and 4E is an egg-deprived level. So I can definitely benefit from um, doing it in that order and getting a bunch of eggs here and then using them to solve uh, puzzles that uh, 
make things go faster in um, 4E. We'll see. And then um, probably the biggest difference between the Japanese version and the English version is this upcoming section here. Anyone know how, uh, how, to, spell Yoshi, how to spell Yoshi in Japanese? Yas Yasi, uh, or I'm not saying it right. Uh, y o s s y versus a uh, y o s h i. So the flowers are a little bit different. Actually affects how you do that section there. <laughs> All right, so here I'm going to use a um, a seventh egg glitch. Whenever um whenever you're aiming, um the one of your eggs becomes part of Yoshi's sprite, so it doesn't count towards your six egg slots altogether. So I'm going to use that exploit to get an extra egg to shoot this uh, flower coming up here in order to have uh, an extra egg. I'm out of here. All right, the next section is actually pretty easy, so I'm going to let uh, I'm going to throw it back at Golden. Let him sing some donations uh, too. If you if you get a second here, but maybe you're going through a pipe or something, uh, can you make a heart with your hands? Right, is that is that something I can get you to do? Wait, you, you need me yeah, to? Yeah, can, can you just make a heart with your hands? You know, the hand heart. There you go. All right. Uh, we had an, a donor donate $2,258. <laughs> and uh, their donation comment was simply just uh, a heart. So there we go. Thank you for that donation. Oh, my God. I jumped too soon. <laughs> Ah, oh, dude. I saw that too. I was hoping it wasn't going to happen. It's all good. Though. The heart was worth it. All right, what we got? We got a uh, slots. Slots. All right. I've actually never won slots before. <laughs> like this, is actually, it's really hard to win. Have you ever won it before? Uh, I. Yeah, you have never tried. No. <laughs> I've never tried to actually win it. <laughs> All right, so you see here in 6E, I left with uh, four red eggs. I will use all four red eggs to acquire uh, two stars from each of their cracked eggs when they open, which will give me eight stars, which will allow me to skip uh, the intended um, the intended uh, stars that this level requires. This is called the Impossible Maze. It's a really, it's a, oh my god, it's a really obnoxious level. You have to do like, I think it's like a three-lap system to get everything required because of the crate puzzle. Okay, I'm using that seventh egg glitch right now. I have six eggs in my inventory right now, and I have the seventh egg as part of Yoshi's sprite. Okay. I'm gonna do this pretty cool shot right here. Stars. So you see me uh, rack up stars left and right here. This is all to skip the. Because uh, here's what happens. All right, there's like there's a certain um, uh, 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 cave entrance, whatever the hole right there I came out of, that uh, it's it's above the ground. The only way to get on it is to be on a crate. However, you have to break the crates in order to get the stars here. The only stars in the entire level are all like crates. That you have to crack open for six stars. So you have to get to a you have to get to a crate, crack it open for stars, and then do a big lap back around to get the crate to come back again. So you can then use it for the height required to get to the door or whatever. However, by getting the stars early via red egging and whatnot, I can use the crate that I have right here for its intended purpose on the first trip, rather than the second trip. If that makes sense. So I'm gonna, uh, so I can do this now, and boom. So that saves like a bunch of time by doing that. This is why I do a uh, 4E after 6E, rather than just in some random descending order. Uh, I think overall that saves like. I forget. I don't, even, I don't even know how much time that saves, actually. A bunch. <laughs> we can agree on that, right? All right. So if you remember the uh, the flashing eggs here from the from like I don't know forever ago. Unique twist here. Uh, got to fire this here real quick. It's a unique twist here. Um, fun fact, if you jump through a gold ring with flashing eggs in your inventory, 
they instantly crack open. So no need to even like fire. Because again, remember, if you fire the flashing egg at a target, the red coin will come out of the egg, and you have to like physically touch the red coin at that point. So it's easier just to like exploit that uh that fact right there. You can do that instead. Not even not even worry about it. All right, so here we are, man. 5e, the final level in the game. And let me tell you, it's not an easy one, too. As you see, who's been the most annoying single aspect in the entire game? Arguably Poochie, but you don't see him often enough for him to actually be like the, the number one nuisance. It is Kamek the Witch. This is uh, this level is called Kamek's Revenge. He's gonna fly around and just torment my existence the entire level, dude. Super annoying. You can die here for like a million reasons, too, by the way. This level is not easy at all. First room, first try. It's pretty good. But yeah, well, I, mean, I can go over so many things about that level, dude. If you if you enter that level with more than two eggs, the beginning section of all the baseball boys would just lag to oblivion, and you'll just easily lose it, miss an input, a jump, and just fall to your death. Even here, Cammy can just like scoop you up, hit you, make you fall in that pit, no problem. Um, these skis don't even control that well, so it's really easy to miss coins in your first try here. This level is just absolutely a torment. Like, <laughs> oh my god. I don't know, help, help me out, Crispy. How many how many runs have you had that were good that failed at this final level? Quite a few, actually. It's it's the one of the dumbest levels in the game. Uh. <laughs> I can agree with that. It's it, it's trolly. It's not even like a it's not even challenging. It's just trolly. Because look, I'm I'm in a ski I'm in a ski right now, which is like has annoying controls, and I'm gonna jump it right out of skiing directly into a helicopter. Yay! Oh, I'm so excited. Mind you, Kamek is still flying around, gonna, look at that, look at that, look at that, he's thirsty to attack me right now, but I'm gonna keep denying him. So we come down here and get the final three red coins. No, notice too here that, uh, that iconic chime right there, I didn't bring that up like way earlier. The, when you get your 20th red coin, it makes a distinctive chime noise to confirm to you that you got that coin. Which is actually really nifty for speedrunning, because it means I can, uh, if you're ever insecure about missing a coin earlier in the level, that'll give you the confirmation that you either missed it or you didn't get it at a certain point. Alright, and here we are. We're gonna... The bonus skip here, just walk through the snow. And there we go. So, um, the, the timer stops when I get back to the level select screen, and the, the level icon flips from 100% back to the regular icon. Because you have to get a bonus skip here in order to, you know, if the, in the now, the bonus skip here wouldn't mean anything, right? So time and time very, very shortly here. You ready for it when it flips back around? Time. Time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Trihex. Now, keep in mind now, even though I was the one doing the run this time, that speedrunning, it's, it's always a collaborative effort. It's a community effort. So the Yoshi Island community, through exchanging strategies, um, doing theory routing, uh, just going in the lab and just collaborating on a, on a big grand level. The, the goal, ultimately, of speedrunning is to push the time down, not to necessarily be the, the best, the de facto. But I do want to give a big shout out personally to my boy Trix right here, the prodigy. Dude, 17 years old, world's best Yoshi Island player right here. This guy's a champ, a monster. You should give him an applause. He's, 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 a, he's a man. It's awesome. You know, a big shout out to Crispy too. Crispy, uh, any percent world record holder right here. Uh, Rock, the co-commentary, did a fantastic job. Dude, big, big ups to Golden over here. Dude, the, the chemistry right now is, is real. Like, I'm going to give you a free heart right now. Oh, you're going to give me a free heart? I'm going to give you yeah. a $31,526 heart in return. That's how much it was raised during mm. Yoshi's Island to kick it off. Awesome. Awesome. Great stuff. Well, dude, thank you so much for having Yoshi Island again. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the hype 5-4 skip. Uh, look forward to checking out the Ocean community. Um, we're always uh, very active. Love to see more people play the game. Like that's don't don't let all the YOLO swag intimidate you. The game is very inviting, very fantastic, very unlike any other speed game. It's sick. So uh, what happens now? 
All right. Uh, well, we're just going to let you guys uh, know on the stream here, we're actually going to take the stream down uh, for a few minutes here to address some of the technical issues that we've been running into. So we're going to try to provide you the uh, best quality stream that we can, and we don't want to start another run before doing that. So uh, give us just a few minutes here, and we'll be right back. So stay tuned. Summer Games Done Quick 2015, live from St. Paul. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> 